propel force. What significance does that have? What are you say, what are you saying with this title? This title is is from the book of Revelations because I, I have to tell you this, and, and you may think I'm nuts if you want to, uh, but this is the truth. Either these men are following the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is is it is in the in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're either following it just like a plan and bringing the prophecies in there to pass to manipulate and control those who believe in those prophecies and neutralize them so to speak in other words uh, if this is written in the Bible and God has ordained it who am I to resist it must come to pass so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to stop it okay. what a perfect way to neutralize the opposition right off the bat or there really is a God and what he said was going to come to pass is coming to pass. Hey man, this is Tommy Chong. Right now you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. Hey, to be sure to don't want the real Wolf of Wall Street. And you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. Hey, what's up guys? It's Sean Danielson from Smile Empty Soul and you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol Baskin and you are listening to the Anthony Roger show. This is Shirley Phelps Roper with the Westboro Baptist Church, and you are listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. What's up? It's Tom from Play YTs hanging out on the Anthony Rogers Show. What's up, everyone? This is Wayne from Highlighty Peace, and you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. I'm Baby No Money, and you're listening to the Anthony Rogers Show, the best podcast. It's Satan Sebastian of the Connors, and you are listening to the Anthony Rogers Show. Brian Bedrock from the Verb Pipe here, and you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show. Today's guest is Brad Stewart. He is an American bassist, best known for his work with hard rock bands Shinedown and Fuel. He now plays in Saliva, Society Red, and Burn Season. Omaha steaks are guaranteed to be perfect every single time. Can your grocery store say that? Can anyone? If you think this confidence sounds good, wait until you taste it. Just a little grilling wisdom from Omaha Steaks. For a limited time, get $40 off your first order when you use code BESTSTEAKS at checkout. Visit omahasteaks.com today. Welcome to Hemper, the absolute best place to get your monthly smoking box for any occasion. Our monthly boxes keep you stocked with all your smoking essentials. Never run out of supplies again. Along with your monthly smoking essentials is a uniquely themed glass piece every month. Worried about your privacy? All our packages are shipped discreetly to your door. So sit back, relax, and let the magic happen. Visit Hemper.com to order your monthly subscription box today. Here at Luxurious, we only use the best California pine trees around. Each woody oil and bomb contains up to one whole tree. Did you know I handpick each and every pine cone myself and make it a point to find the older ones because, well, those are aged to perfection. Once the perfect tree is taken down and strategically stacked, it's on to phase two. At this point, each pine is carefully cut into smaller and more manageable pieces. I mean, will you just look at that pile of select wood? From this stage, the BFS 9000 shreds the pines into an almost angel soft fibrous material as shown here. Here at Luxurious we use quality ingredients and the freshest pine cones. Get luxurious my friends. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe with uh, America's favorite rock star Sean Danielson. How you doing man? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, man. Uh, live from New Orleans right now in a in a in a hotel. You know, doing the hotel thing. Oh, this week New Orleans treating you, dude. Pretty good, man. Pretty good. It's uh, first is time here. You know, is that your? It's your first time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty dope. Um, also, this is the first episode that'll be on my uh, Spotify video. So after this records live, this will be on Spotify in video form as well as audio and like obviously Roku and all that stuff still. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like I had to say that. You know. Absolutely, it's pretty, pretty what, sweet uh, what tech technology can do these days. 
Yes, I, I can't believe we, like that many people want to see it, you know. But uh, so we have a, a huge guest. I mean, he's in like several legendary bands. Uh, founding member of, uh, of one, one of my favorite bands. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Brad Stewart, how you doing, brother? What up, guys? How y'all doing? Good, man. Good, man. What's it like being an absolute legend, bro? I wouldn't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being in the Illuminati. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, now that I could tell you. Actually, Good, uh, you know, Sean yeah. and I are trying to get in the Illuminati. If that's fine, if you have any uh, applications, you figured for you are a ticket in. Yeah, <laughs> just, just talk to the Rockefellers, right? Or, or, or was it the Rothschilds, or, or all three, <laughs> or all, all two? I guess. I think they <laughs> could. Any of those guys could get it done for us. Yeah, man. But so was you, that were really? founding, you were a founding member of Shine Down too. Original bassist, yes, it was. That's nuts, bro. That's crazy. That's that's yeah. how that's how Brad and I met back when we were youngsters. Yeah, man. Sean's band was blowing up, dude. And and they wouldn't give us the time of day at the label, man. They, <laughs> they, they thought we were just knuckle dragon rednecks or something, man. You know? <laughs> uh, but Sean's band, it, it's it's like the 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 gif or, or the meme where that they're the ladies throwing the singer up. That was Sean's band. We were the bass players drowning in the in the pool right next to it. I don't know if you've seen the meme. But anyway. I, yeah. I, I remember back in the day we played. I mean, we played a lot of fests together back in the day, a lot of shows together. But I remember one specific festival, we were all hanging out, and you guys had like this. It was like a slightly shorter bus. I think it was like your first, your first <laughs> the bus. The short you bus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do actually. Yeah. And, and we were we were all hanging out, and and you guys were you guys were bitching about not having a, a music video for your first single, which was blowing up. Um, and uh. You know, you guys were a little bit angry about that. Everybody else in, in the radio scene at that time had a music video, and they, they didn't you, give us one. Yeah, you ended up doing all right, though. You know, we did okay. <laughs> it was more of a like a slow build. You know, it was like, uh, but that's like, better. Well, you guys got to kind of go out there and earn it. You got to go earn some fans. You know, you don't have any fans, and yeah. we didn't. They were kind of right. You know, it was like, so I mean, it was it's one of those things where they're like, we're here. Here's the pie. We can only give you a couple pieces of the pie. The video is not one of the pieces. <laughs> right. So, so good luck. You know, it was like radio and touring were what they mainly gave as far as budget wise went. So yeah. it was a it, it kind of got put on the manager, Bill McGathy, who the band is still managed by to oh, wow. and his staff to pretty much do a lot of the things that the label would have normally done. Uh in the very beginning, because I mean, they have a lot of bands, and I get it. And not, and of, of course, every band on the label thinks they should be top priority one on the label, but we just weren't. And we weren't the kind of band either that had been together for you know ten years and had all like a, like a hardcore following. And they finally are they going to give us a shot at it? We didn't have any fans, man. Like until you know, like literally, we we put the single out and just started touring. You know, we had to basically start from nothing. You know, was forty five so, your first single then? No, it's fly from the inside. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was tough, man. I mean, you know, and like Sean said, we at least you know management made it make sense for us once we actually started touring to be on a bus. Otherwise, we'd have been in a van with a trailer and 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 renting hotel rooms and and sleeping on floors. Even the short bus, it had nine bunks and it had a bathroom, and we had a driver, so That's we couldn't complain. Right yeah, yes. Yeah. So that was the good part. I mean, um as far as starting out that way, I mean, but you know, in the very beginning, we, we opened a lot for like three doors down and, and they were playing small hockey arenas. I mean, they're playing proper venues, you know, so small arenas, is that what you said? <laughs> like, like hockey arenas, you know, like, uh, yeah. they, they were kicking ass. I mean, they had like five buses and 10 trucks or whatever it was. And <laughs> here we are in the little short bus pulling up. Hey, how you doing? We're shine down. Nice to see you. We were like first of four, and we got 30 minutes to play, you know, so we had to make every second of that 30 minutes count, you know. Well, sounds like you did, man. Like, you know, yeah. we were out there, especially on that first record. It was it was, you know, us against the world, man. It was like, uh, you know, anything we could do to to, to get out there. We, we would do radio sometimes a couple different stations every day. We would do interviews, meet and greets, the whole thing, which you kind of have to do that, especially as a, as a brand new band. It's it's. You know, you can't be lazy at all. You got to go in there and, and work it. And, you know, I think that the relationships that we made early on at radio pretty much laid the 
the groundwork for the band's future and the, the, the singles. Cause as you know, I'm pretty sure shine down at this point holds the record maybe for the most number one singles at mainstream rock. So, Man. I mean, I mean that's really? a, yeah, they do. <laughs> I mean, it's Ooh, pretty big cool. deal. I mean, so, and that's up against Foo Fighters, God's not, you know, it's up against some pretty stiff uh, competition, but yeah. it, it's one chart, but I mean, still, it's a big, it's a big deal, you know? It's awesome. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize that. I mean, obviously I've watched shine down, just continue to kill it for all these yeah. years, 20, 20 years now, but I didn't realize that, that they had that record. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to say, you know, I was out of the band in 07 after the second record and, um, I want to say uh, the third record. Uh, I want to say Sound of Madness. They may have released six singles on the one record and toured it for like three. It was crazy, man. I saw like a lot of singles to come off of one. That's half the record. <laughs> but I guess it was, you know, it was something that they wanted to stay out there and and really. And when Second Chance came out, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the one that kind of sent them over the moon, you know, on that on that record at least. Um, yeah. Uh, how old were you when uh, when this all started? Like, uh, like you look young in those pictures. Like, how, how old were you on that? What are you saying? I don't look young now. <laughs> I was just saying, put words in my mouth. Put words in. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I was. I want to say. So I was. Uh, let's see. Leave a whisper came out in '03. I was born in '74. So do the math. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Twenty nine. 29 when that came out. Now, when I when I went to California and I wrote with Puddle of Mud, I think I was 25 when that was going on. You looked like a baby in those early promo fixtures. That's why I was like, I, I, I expected younger for some reason. It's like you looked like a, you looked like super young in those. That's crazy. I'm 48 now, man. But yeah, it was it was that was you know leave a whisper 20 years ago. I mean, that's it's crazy to think about. Came out in 03. I mean, dude, it, funny fun. funny fact that I didn't know until just recently, but our first albums came out the same day. Oh shit! Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, wow. 20, 20 years ago, May, whatever it was that just passed. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. Um, yep. Which I guess that's why we ended up playing so many, so many shows together. We were kind of in the same, same exact like time period. And also, we were on the same label ish because you guys were on uh, Atlantic and we were on Lava, which was a subsidiary. So, uh, right. You had Jason Flom and, and kind of his uh and we were on like the the i guess the atlantic part but it was lava atlantic so you, you probably had the same we, we shared people right much. we shared yeah. some some staff you know i remember like our you know those regional radio reps would sometimes you know be working with us talking about working your song as well at the same time so i think we shared at least you know radio people and yeah. some sort of publicity and, and some other stuff you know yeah yeah it's definitely you know it's it's a big label, but you know, of course, there's departments that that you know we we and and people every every city we'd get to, you know, there there would used to be a radio rep there to support us and, and to take us there to the station and, and meet everybody and 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 you know, kind of hang out and and kind of build those relationships with with those folks and, and and they were good to us, man. And the staff of Atlantic, especially in the radio department, was super cool. We made those are like we made like lifetime friends out of those folks you know it was really cool that's um, that's great and yeah. i think they truly did believe and they were really excited to share because like i said in the very beginning you know it's not like we were mtv darlings or something you know or like we just i, I want to say leave a whisper the first week may have sold maybe it was three thousand copies or maybe it was seven thousand whatever it was and I was like, whoa, that's a long way to gold, let alone platinum, man. You know, like that's we got some work to do, boys. <laughs> Saddle up, you know. Yeah. So so it was like, you know, but, you know, since then it sold over two million. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And the second Congrats record that I was a, a part of uh, is platinum now, too. It, it went gold while I was still around. But, uh, yeah. That's so, great, man. You know, I, going back to the the whole the grind that you were talking about, you know, waking up early and going to the radio station and then going straight to a meet and greet and then going somewhere else and doing an acoustic performance. <clears throat> I don't think most people realize the amount of craziness that goes into that. You know, it's like um, people think it's glamorous and party and, and well, there are, there, there's plenty of that, <laughs> but, but then you, you, you may be partying your ass off, but you've got to be up at 6 a.m. to do man cow show or whatever it is. Yep. And and it's like there, there's a lot of, of work that goes into all that. It's, yeah, it's, it's like 
you know, especially if you're drinking with Sean Danielson, I think what was it was Jaeger was what we were doing at the time. Maybe Jaeger bombs for fuck's sake, man, gross. <laughs> you know, but but I mean it was, you know, and actually we did man cow. It was kind of funny because uh my my boy Freak, I don't know if you remember Freak, he was part of the Man Cow show. He still has this out. He's got a uh he's got a, a a bar outside like a uh, little south of Chicago that we've actually played acoustic at and and electric saliva's played it. But it was kind of funny because just like you were saying, when we did Man Cow, um, I think Brent, I think we were doing 45 or, or fly from the inside. And Brent was singing probably an octave or two below what he normally would uh, sing this song. A, a whole octave, huh? Yeah, yeah. He was singing low, you know, <laughs> like a four. And, and so, free, you know, they, then Brent asked him, well, what else, you know, would you guys like us to play? And Freak goes, how about some high notes? <laughs> <laughs> and we'd been up all night, you know, so it was like, oh, man, kick of the nuts. But, I mean, we still sounded pretty good. But, it, you know, Brent was one of those guys that, like, especially acoustic, like, if you were around him uh, enough, you would – I mean, he'd make the hair on your, your neck stand straight up just with just, just with his performance and his power and his, and his range and his voice, man. It was really something to, to – very cool to, to, to witness sometimes, you know. It was really cool. He's a great singer, yeah. He really is. Yeah, man. He yeah, really I, I remember uh, doing Man Cow. We did Man Cow. And uh, the night before that, we played with Seether in, uh, at the House of Blues. And uh, Pat and Dale and I were just, I mean, we were partying hard, like, until whatever, you know, three, four in the morning. Yeah. I got, like, literally an hour and a half of sleep or something. Then we had to load into Man Cow. Dude. And then... Uh, I mean, I, I could barely function as a human being, let alone play, let alone perform, you know? And, yeah. and, uh, there were, there were a lot of those, a lot of those moments back then. There was man. And, and man cow had a lot of reach too. So it wasn't just Chicago. It was going out everywhere. Dude. So, right he's, there. Still, yeah. oh, he's still big. Is he really? I, I, is, he's, 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 he's on Instagram. That's, yeah, he, has some stuff. he seems pretty famous still. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. He was cool to us, man. Super cool guy, man. It was an awesome show. We had a blast, you know. Yeah, he was cool. He was cool to us until I swore on air on accident. What'd you say? I said fuck. <laughs> oh, and, that's uh, a big one. And they cut the feed. You know, they had like the emergency button and shit. And yeah. so they Oh, and you know what it was? Uh I couldn't I I, I fucked up the song because Oh. Uh, I was so out of it. I was completely out of it. I fucked up the song, and I literally said "fuck" in the mic during the song. And and they <laughs> like just you messed up and said "fuck." What? Like you messed up and said "fuck" or something? Yeah, yeah. I messed up the performance. <laughs> that was I crazy. Said, Fuck, like in the mic, and then they they dove on that emergency button. They cut the feed, and uh, they have like a they had like a seven second delay. Or delay. Something. They can get to it. Yeah, if they catch it in time, they can get to it. But, man. So then, <laughs> then they they went to like a commercial and came back, and then we started over. And and it was, at least I didn't do that, but it was definitely a a tough a tough one to get through for me. Comedy's like that in some markets too. Like you have to be up like four in the morning to like talk on the radio for some reason. Like it's like I I I, I hate that aspect of waking up early. It, it's yeah, I'm that's more personal. Brutal. Oh shit, yeah. yeah. So yeah, what? Man. What got you into music, Brad? Like, what was what was like your thing that was like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a fucking rock star and be in like three multi platinum fucking bands? Like, like what was what was, what was the thing that like, got you going? You think, man? Like, man, my brother and I, like, uh, you know, we, we didn't grow up with a ton of money. My my parents gave us everything they had, God bless them, and everything. But so we shared a lot of things, and, and, and including our first guitar, we got a, a Fender Squire Bullet. And a PV Rage, man, you know? <laughs> wow. And my friend, you know, I, I was a skateboarder back in the day. I lived, breathed, and eat shit. I love skateboarding. I, and actually, I was a decent skateboarder. I was, a, like, co-sponsored for a minute there and, and uh, by a couple of guys that were riding for Powell Peralta and stuff here in, in Jacksonville. And anyway, so, you know, of course, then I hit puberty, though. And, you know, I started listening to Metallica and the Colts and, and you know, and shit. And, you know, my dad had tried to give us a guitar when we were when we were even younger, but he he got us like a, a Spanish with with the nylon strings, and we couldn't even reach around the fretboard. Our hands were too small. So you know, us getting that guitar though, and I had friends that were actually pretty good players, you know, and and they were already showing us like you know Master of Puppets and stuff. And you know, when you barely can play the thing, and then but then you're trying to learn Master of Puppets, it's discouraging. You know, it can be discouraging, but um. 
you know, I, it was one, it's something, you know, I, I just, I guess I really felt connected to the music I was listening to. And, and once I was able to learn the, how to play the instrument, um, I feel like it was just something that was in me. And my mom was always like, well, you can play music, but you got to have a backup plan. And, and I was like, okay, whatever. You know, but I, I ended up with a backup plan. I, I did go to college and I have a degree in biology and I, and I did what they wanted me to do. But the whole time I played, I played music in bands, you know, coming up in Jacksonville and stuff. And it was about the mid 90s. We were, we were, you know, me and some friends were, we had bands and we were playing around town. And um, we, you know, we were played at this, this, you know, storage unit. It had no AC or nothing. It was just a storage unit, whatever. And there, there were several bands in there. And uh, one day, a friend of mine, uh, Sam Richard, that he was actually I went to high school with, he was he was playing bass for a band called Authority Porch, and we're like, yeah, man, he was playing, and they were playing in the same you know storage place that we were, and he's like, man, we got this new singer, you should come check him out, and we're like, oh, cool, man, yeah, we'll walk over. So we walk over, and I see this guy, and he's got like like short, real short, like blonde hair, and you could tell he's got he's got tattoos and stuff, and you could tell he had flavor and these they start a song and the guy starts singing and then he throws the mic on the ground and jumps down and starts singing against the mic on the ground and this is like rehearsal you know they're just fucking around and uh that was that, that was first time at fred durst that's who that was huh. so so from that yeah. point on i saw him and i was like that motherfucker's going places you know <laughs> and we became friends and stuff so um, and in fact, we had to let go of our singer at one point, um, who was a dear friend of mine. And we, and there was some, there were some reasons, there was some drama and stuff within the band. And then also, you know, personally or whatever. And, uh, we tried to get Fred in the band, of course, you know, as the singer and, um, he had already started Limp Biscuit, So he still though would, would come and jam and write with us and stuff, you know? And in fact, um, one of the songs I, I co-wrote with him ended up in the song rearranged uh the the bridge part the you make believe nothing yeah, yeah. is wrong but i didn't get any credit for it though so i was like man of course that's kind of a bummer bro where you at friend <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know he wrote the words it, he just wrote over my part basically and he just took but it was same baseline and everything but whatever I, I didn't i didn't do nothing about it you know he's my friend and um Welcome to the music industry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> which which mine is yours and what's yours is mine. Actually, what's yours is mine and fuck off. <laughs> All the above. But the good news is, I mean, later on down the road, you know, when Limp Biscuit started blowing up, um, he he, you know, they gave him his own imprint on uh on Geffen Records called Flawless. Uh, and he was able to sign bands on his own, uh, you know, on his label. And um, so this was about like I had just graduated uh, college in 1999, like December, right? So I graduate, and uh, I'm like, now what? Fuck, man. You know, like, Fred's doing Biscuit. Like, my band wasn't doing anything. And uh, it was it, it's a degree in biology, so I didn't really know what to do. I was like, I, am I going to go to med school? Like, what am I going to do with my life here, you know? <laughs> and then I get a phone call from Danny Wimmer. So Danny Wimmer had the liquor license at the old milk bar and that's how i know him from way back in the day the old milk bar here in jacksonville which everyone from corn has played there you know to to 311 to like like everybody soundgarden played there on bad motor finger or whatever is that a clockwork orange reference milk bar it is yes yes okay. it is yeah it is and they they were droogs and they would dress they would dress like that it was a killer bar legendary bar in jacksonville awesome. it closed many years ago but yeah man so so back then so so they, they were signing a guy uh, named Wesley Scantlin back then uh, from Puddle of Mud. Yeah, I knew, he signed, I knew he signed Puddle of Mud. I remember that. And so so they didn't like his band, though. So I got the phone call from Danny, who now Danny, you know, runs. Um, he, he's a huge concert promoter. So welcome to Rockville. All the incarceration, all the big festivals around town. It's Danny Wimber Presents. So he's totally made a huge you know success of his of his concert business at that you know at, at present time but but back then he was like fred's a and r you know uh i guess you call him a and r coordinator or whatever so we go and we meet with with danny and he plays this wes's stuff and uh and he's like fred really wants you guys it was myself paul phillips and shane t-bone webb on drums and he he was like um we want y'all to come out and and play with this guy audition i guess you know whatever so Next thing you know, there we go to LA 
And, uh, and it's funny because Danny, we landed, right? And we get our gear and stuff. And he goes, I know it was a long flight and shit, but uh, we're going right to the her rehearsal room. <laughs> we were like, damn, <laughs> son. <laughs> Cracking a whip and shit, you know? Don't waste any time. Yeah, man. So uh, so anyhow, we, we, we learned his songs and stuff. And then, uh, and then, you know, we play a couple days just playing along with his songs. And then so... Um, Danny goes, well, hey, do you guys have any 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 riffs or any songs you want to present to Wes? Maybe he can write with you, you know? So I presented the song that eventually became Control. Uh, oh, the, wow. the, smack, the Smack My Ass song. So I'm like, here, I got a riff or whatever, you know? So And I had had recorded that song, but it had a different verse part and a different bridge and shit. But, um, but anyway... Oh, the guy just, slammed me. Had you recorded it, like, did you write the lyrics and the melodies and all that too? I just wrote this, the main riff. Oh, I got you. Know, just the main riff and stuff. But uh, I am Allison Chains. Love them. <laughs> it's facelift. Yep. One of my favorite bands of all time. That's awesome. That's a good band, man. But yeah, so man, so I got, I, that was my pretty much what got me started in the music business, just knowing Fred awesome. and co writing that, that song. And, and the, the rest of that led me to, of course, to Brent and to then to Fuel and then to Saliva and just been doing that's, it that's funny. I, in music i'm completely untalented but as a customer i remember liking every single band you named i remember being like a sixth grade loving with biscuit i remember getting a little older loving sean's band and i remember like, like and then like like your band came out around the same time I, re I remember like all like just as a customer i remember like literally like like that whole thing and that's amazing that you're you guys are a part of that man that's, that's nuts like that's just well, so crazy. what happened with uh with you actually playing for puddle that why didn't that work out it was funny man you know Okay, so Doug Ardito worked at the label, and he was actually there watching my audition. So I don't know if Danny had already sort of decided that he was going to be the guy, but he had to wow. sort of honor Fred's wishes and let us give it a shot or whatever. And truth be told, man, I was more focused on finishing school at the time, like college. And, I, you know, like I said, my band hadn't been very active anyway. I cut my hair short. I mean, I think Fred was thinking because back, you know, back in the 90s and stuff and early 2000s, I had like uh, I looked more like uh, Mike Inez or or like like a grunge guy, and you know Wes. I guess he figured well, Wes it sounds it's kind of Nirvana ish. You know Brad would fit at least from his look. Let's see if he can play. Let's see if he can write whatever. Um, so, but yeah, after dude, we wrote the the song, and I was on cloud nine. I'm like, fuck, man, we just wrote one of his best songs. I think. I mean, he had he had already Pretty had smart. drift and drift and die and shit. He didn't have blurry yet. I don't think. Um, but I was like, man, I'm in. This is this is awesome. You know, I I think I'm in this shit. You know, yeah. literally the next day, I see, I see Danny, and he's handing me a Delta plane ticket, and he was like, man, uh, we're gonna audition other guys, man. Thanks for coming out. You know, and and if we decide to use the song, we'll 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 uh, we'll, we'll basically make you an offer to, for the song. You know what I mean? It's whatever. Yes. So I said, okay, man, whatever, dude. Like, you know, I felt like I I we connected with Wes on that level, at least as far as the, write, the writing part. And I guess they were just looking for something else, you know, whatever. So, so well, there I, I went, man. I, I actually walked on Hollywood Boulevard, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams, dude. I was like James Dean or something. I'm like, fuck, now what? You know, it was, it was weird, you know? That's crazy how many bands you're connected to. That's like, that's like yeah. crazy to me. That's awesome, but it's crazy. It's been a wild ride. You know, what would you, I mean, this is kind of a cheesy question, but I mean, we've got a lot of people watching that probably like love music and stuff. Like, what, what would you, what advice would you give somebody? Like, either, either of you guys are killing it. I mean, or what advice would you guys give people that are like watching this that want to be in a band that's like even half as fucking cool as your guys' bands, you know? Oh, man, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'd say choose something else. <laughs> I mean, really, the, the fucking music business, it just has a way of chewing people and spitting them out. Even, I mean, good people, bad people. It's just, I don't know, man. It, it's it's it is it is crazy that Sean and I have still be able to operate in the business for for twenty years and have careers this long. I mean, most people just don't. Uh, let alone you guys are legends, man. It's nuts. Like, I mean, I can't, I can't, I like looking at this screen. I can't believe I'm on this screen with you guys. It's like nuts to me. Like, you know, it's like as a fan of music, it's fucking. You guys are both legends, man. Like, dude, thanks so much, man. I mean, it, it's me, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 like i said it's 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 been fun man but it's, it's been definitely filled with you know it's challenges along the way you know yeah yeah i, I tried to do music i was just completely untalented so i went to comedy you know i i, I felt like uh it was easier to talk into a microphone than like set up a drum set and like then be talented and like all this other stuff it was just like you know what i mean so i respect anybody could kill it i think i tell sean that repeatedly but i i i i, I admire anybody can like do everyone's trying to do what you guys do so that's why it's interesting to me 
because like, I think everybody wants to be a rock star on earth. I mean, I, I think, I mean, every dude at least, you know, I think it, now there's going to be AI robots becoming the rock stars and we might not even know it, man. You know, they might be oh, the new dude, it's, it's destiny right there. There's, yeah. It's going to be all computer written AI generated songs within a couple of years. I bet if I was you guys, I'd be mad, but man, did you, if you hear like Hank Williams do like an NWA cover AI, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just like, like, like I'd be pissed if I was you guys though, honestly. But, uh, but I feel like, uh, you no, know, there's a customer. I mean, AI is kind of interesting. And I think, like, real talent will always outshine computers, I think, no matter what. I mean, it'll, it'll add a different game. The game will change a little bit. But, I mean, I mean, I just I just don't think it's the end-all, be-all for you guys, for rock stars, you know? Well, I mean, I, I, I think – Just suck them off already. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Tough room, man. Tough fucking room. <laughs> I'm just being honest, man. I, I, you mean, I, I, I could, like, lie and, like, be insecure and stuff. I'm just being you – but you guys are fucking legends. I don't care, you know? I, I'll own what I said, you know, otherwise I wouldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not my type. I only like black men. Sorry, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, I only like the Jews, you know. I'm a Jewish supremacist. So that's what I mean. Oh, man. <laughs> Going for all the political. I love it. Still trying to get the Illuminati with your comments. I'm trying to, yeah. It's not yeah. working yet. I'm in, a, I'm in a hotel room in New Orleans. It's not working out for me, you know. You, you got to start with at the at the bottom as a Freemason, right, or something? Yeah, you got to pay your dues, dude. Got to pay your dues, bro. Thirty three is a lot of lot of steps to get to the top of the Freemason run. You, know? you got a lot of babies to sacrifice, dude. You gotta I went that's right, and yeah, you got to <laughs> totally. start on the low rung and work your way up. I went Man. to a Freemason meeting. It's just a bunch of like old dudes in like in like cheap suits. It was just weird. It was just weird. I mean, like I don't think they're. I don't. Maybe they're powerful. I don't know. I, I don't. But it just like looked like a weird buffet of like bad food and like old suits you know what I, mean? I feel like you guys are more successful than the freemason type ever met <laughs> like i don't know well you, you'd think william cooper would would have noticed you know like or would have I mean, which he was he was in some some i, I love be, behold a pale horse man i know that was oh, on the dude. intro dude same are you guys into the remote viewing thing with ingo swan or any of that business did you ever get into like uh learning about any of that uh, i learned about it but i don't fully understand like, some of my friends claim that, like the psychic we had in there like two weeks ago uh i can remote view i i can't do any of that but i love the story you know yeah i mean apparently he was able to sort of project his consciousness wherever he wanted to <laughs> you know i think I mean? we so, all can we just don't know how that's what he said he's like anyone can do it you just need to be sort of guided through the process but in in the book that I have of his, I'm like halfway through it. It's a short book, but um, I guess I guess he projected his consciousness on the moon, and he saw some crazy shit on the dark side there. So you should you should check it out if you have. I bet. I, yeah. I heard a lot of stories on like Reddit and stuff of people like uh, doing that and like trying to go to the White House. And there's weird barriers in certain places. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of that was always kind of interesting. Like you, like if you project to the Psychic White House. Barriers. What was that? Psychic barriers. Yeah, yeah. Like there's like these weird um. There's these weird like uh, walls or cages or I forget exactly. I gotta, I gotta read the articles again, but like it was, it was some like people were trying to remote view certain places that are very popular and stuff like that, and they have like defenses against them. Wow, I, I wonder how surprised. they can. Well, dude, the CIA has been using remote viewing since fucking. I mean, I don't even. I don't know when it began, but decades and decades ago. You know? Well, now they're in all of our rooms, so now we have now we have, yeah. now we have a bunch of CIA remote viewers here. You know, they're watching you jerk off too. You know, that's what I heard. Who would? Yeah. Who would? <laughs> It's probably their one of their favorite parts, I'd imagine. Oh, <laughs> Got to give them a show, man. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, nah, dude. But uh, so, yeah, you know, we're, we're putting out a record saliva um, coming up soon uh, in September. We've been working on for like three years, <laughs> two years. Um, so y'all should y'all should be checking that out. We got a tour and stuff coming up and and everything. Um, That's another legendary I, band. Like, how how'd you get into saliva, or what happened with that story? Well, so early on in the Shinedown days, um, we had the same manager, the same booking agent, the same producer. Um, so I kind and we would open for them, you know, uh, way back in you know, like 2002 or three or whatever it was. I guess it was 2003 and four. And um, they had already put out a record or two. They're already like on record two. They're already had sold like really well and were kicking ass and stuff. So, you know, they they I think <clears throat> like they had got Kiss Aerosmith you know, back then. And I just knew the guys. Um, we actually, Shinedown did really well in Memphis, where Saliva is from. So that program director down there, Rob Cressman, played the shit out of us in Memphis. And for a minute there, we'd walk down the street. And I mean, we, did, we weren't Elvis Presley, but it felt pretty good. People knew who the fuck we were on record one. It was cool, you know, but that was just in Memphis. 
but uh, yeah, so so anyhow, like so, I I met those guys just from opening for them, you know, when when my band back, my former band, uh, first started. So, um, and so I my you know my my career ran its course through Shine Down, and then I did a couple other bands. One of them was with Bobby Amaru, who is the current singer of uh, Saliva, and then um, and then I went on to do Fuel with Brett Scallions for like 2010 to 2015. Huge, left, man. So so yeah, then I left uh, Fuel and joined Saliva in 2015. And Bobby had kind of, I, I guess they had let Dave Novotny go, who was the original um, bass player. Um, they had let him go quite recently, and and Bobby was like, man, you know, and and my I think my time with with Fuel was was kind of getting close to being up anyhow. And 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 quite honestly, from a, a musical standpoint you know saliva was a bit heavier for me and it's, it's kind of my I, I wanted to be in a, a heavier band i guess i mean don't get me wrong fuel has some heavy songs and i love the band love brett i love my time with that that band i mean we had a blast in that band too but but yeah so you know so i joined saliva i've been with them ever since um uh so about eight years now with saliva so. yeah, dude, it's been that long huh yeah i know that's crazy it is crazy survived the pandemic and everything man Every yeah. time I think of Saliva, I remember this like clip of like uh, like the singer uh, jo Josie, I think, right? Uh, Rachel he, singer, yeah, Josie he Scott. Went, yeah. He went on this thing. He went on this like uh, American Idol type thing, or no, wait, he was on Howard Stern. And then the guy from American Idol was like, he's like, that guy will never make it. He has no sound. He comes out. He's like, he's like, I already do make it. And I already made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he was like, I remember seeing him on Howard Stern, like 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 Simon Cowell was like, he doesn't have what it takes to be in this industry, blah blah. You know, and he's like, I'm already in it. <laughs> like, yeah. just, Wait a second. I've done it. Yeah, I've sold records. What are you doing? <laughs> Dude, yeah, that was that was the funniest thing. I always remember that was saliva. That was like such a funny shit. Like to me. Yeah, yeah I, I always remembered uh playing shows with saliva back in the day, like in the early two thousands when we first came out. Like their crew was always like the fucking meanest. They were really? always like the, no well, I mean uh they, they were always like the ones like yelling at you for being on the stage and fucking <laughs> just being being Henri, you know what I Probably mean? Big Nick and then Big Nick. I don't know if you remember Big Nick, but they went through. I mean, the band's been around over twenty years, so there's probably a lot of crew guys they went through. So, oh, dude, I can't. You know, I, I get that, dude. It, it happens. <laughs> it does. It's like bus drivers, man. <laughs> right, man. I think saliva. I feel it's kind of funny because after I was let go from Shine Down, um, uh, I filled in for saliva when Dave Novotny had his, you know, original bass player had his first child, and it was a uh, so it was Seven Dust saliva. And a couple of bands never said an overseen or whatever. And they're they're good guys, good bands. I still in contact with Sean uh, Ham. But anyway, um, so so I'm filling in for Saliva, man. And 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 uh, what a what a wild ride that was because you know, like I said, I love the band, love the songs. But now I get now I'm going to be on stage with these guys, man. And and you know, some of my friends were like, wow you got to get on a bus with those guys. Like, cause they, you know, they, they're from Memphis and some people think they're just like scary <laughs> and frightening, you know, but they're actually really cool. Good guys, man. You know, you, you know, the original band guys from, from way back then, but, but um, no, we had a lot of fun on that tour, man. You know, it, it was tough to sort of give, try to give seven dust a run for their money every night. You know, it was, that was, Oh, so yeah, that was Oh eight. And uh, I did about a month and a half with them. So so I kind of, when I joined in 2015, I already knew some of the songs. Right. You, you already had that under your belt, doing a whole yeah. tour with them. But, but uh, you know, they're crew guys. I, I could see which, which you meant. Some of those guys could be well, a little. Well, these are aggressive. these are our green days, too. You know I mean? It's like. Oh, oh yes, I'm sure. You, so you, first, to... you first get on the on, on the touring circuit and, and uh, you've got to you got to learn the ropes and maybe you don't get off the stage fast enough, you know, whatever. And, and uh, you, you need some. Huge bearded tattoo guy yelling at you, you know. No shit. Yeah. Gotta learn. Yeah, man. We uh, it's I I learned a lesson. We were on the Van Halen tour. You know, Shine Down was supporting Van Halen is 2004, and uh, we uh, it was Sammy Hagar singing, of course, and um, so so one of the crew guys comes. You know, we we played early. We weren't even billed on. There was, it just said Van Halen. We weren't even on the ticket, you know. And we got 30 oh, minutes, and they gave us this little triangle part of the stage, and they're like, if you go anywhere else outside this triangle, you will not be lit up. And, you know, like we're going to get scolded or something, you know. <laughs> it's the very beginning of the tour. We weren't invited to catering, right? So, um, so it's kind of a funny story how we got invited 
to catering if you want to hear it. Uh, it's so, yeah, so it's like this second show in and, and Eddie, we're at the United Center, you know, in Chicago, right? So Eddie would come, he he would come in our dressing room and we're like, fuck this, Eddie Van Halen's in our fucking dressing room, man. Okay, cool. Like we didn't try to go fuck with him or find him or fangirl on him or nothing. He would come in our room, you know? Huh. So, so awesome. it's early in the day and um, Brent, our singer of Shinedown, you know, so the people haven't brought like paper towels for the bathroom, garbage can, nothing yet. We were just in there super early. And so Brent washes his hands and there's nowhere to, to, to dry his hands. And so Eddie walks in. And, uh, you know, at this time, Eddie, he was having some, I mean, he was a little bit out of his mind. I th I know. You should read Sammy Hagar's book. He, he, I don't know what he was doing, but he was kind of crazy, right? You know, even at like noon, in, you know, or, or two in the afternoon, whatever it was. So he was comes in. Much, was it partying or was it like? Mental, I don't know. Like, he, he would have these purple lips and he'd always, he'd already have like a, a bottle of smoking loon Merlot that he'd already been drinking on. Or like, and he'd always have his guitar and his guitar tech with him, you know? I can't remember that guy's name. But anyway, so Brent goes to shake his hand and he shakes Eddie's hand and Eddie's like, wow, you, you shake my hand, You would you piss on your hand and you didn't wash it, you shake my hand, what the fuck, man? And uh -huh. we're like, we, we don't know how to take it because, I mean, he's, he's kind of crazy, you know? Uh -huh. And so so he's smoking a cigarette. He puts the cigarette in the rolled up turkey, you know, the deli platter. He jumps up on the table, pulls his dick out, and pisses on the turkey. <laughs> and we're sitting there like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I guess there goes lunch, you know? And he goes, hey, feed this to your tour manager. It's called the smoking gun. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> and he walks out. We're like, man, I guess you pissed him off. Did you really piss on your hand? Like, what happened, dude? Like, and he's like, Brent's like, no, I washed my hand. There was nowhere to dry my hands. So anyhow, so the, the, his guy with him radios to, to you know, the tour manager is like, uh, that's it for the deli trays. Uh, we should probably just invite him to catering. <laughs> he walks out. So after that, we're invited to catering. <laughs> <laughs> and on yeah. that tour, too, you know, Alex Van Halen had chose us out of so a bunch of new bands or whatever. And, but we, 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 uh, we weren't getting paid. We had to go back on tour sport. We had just got off tour sport and were able to support <clears throat> ourselves, you know, um, with show guarantees. And um, but they're like, we well, all got offered Van Halen. Only problem is, you know, they're not going to pay you. They can't they're afford gonna... to pay you. Not that they can't afford it. They're just not I'm going. Kidding, to. Dude. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, man. So, um, of course, we said yes. You know, we'll just go further into debt. Screw it. You know, whatever. We're already in total debt to the label anyway. And they were like, company debt isn't real, you know? Well, they were like, but can y'all do it in a van this time? <laughs> That's what the label said to us. We we're like, uh, no. So anyway, we got an old Prevo and they, we made it make sense. And every show was an arena. So we got showers every day and catering. So nice. it was funny. But one of the one of the crew guys was in line. And I guess we were at catering right at five o'clock one time, right? And he looks at me and he goes, one of Van Halen's crew guys, he goes, yeah, I figured I'd get in line and, and eat before the opening band eats all the food. <laughs> okay. So breathe, breathe after that, I, 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 <laughs> so you're talking about le learning lessons on the road. That's like, man, dude, it can be rough out there, man. Fuck. It, it's <laughs> always funny too because it's always crew guys. It seems like that are that are the harshest to like the to the young upcoming bands, or at least that was, that was our experience. You know, it's it's like. Uh, they they love to stick it to you when you're yeah. when you're the the new kid on the block. They do, man. They do. I learned more from from really from just the etiquette and learning from from different crews. You know that we had because I mean, like you said, you, you know, you first starting out, there is a, pe a a pecking order. You know, it's it's and it's happened to us before too. Our bus driver at the time when we were on the uh, the three door is actually three doors and Seether tour. Our driver would park before Cedar got there, and one time the Cedar bus driver got off his bus and about kicked his ass. He was like, "Bro, it's packing order. Like you fucking, we park, then you park after I park." Like they got pissed, like you know. Yeah. But uh, love Cedar. It was nothing to do with that. You know, it's just like man. It's like they even got into it. You know. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's but it's these are the the ways that it's done. They've been done like this forever. There's a reason, and it's you know once you learn all those little rules, it's you understand them and and. Uh, you fight for them, you know, because they they they're there for a reason. Yeah, yeah, man. It's uh, 
But, we, you know, still, we still, you know, on our stupid little headlining tours that we are constantly doing with our our little, you know, bands that come out with us. It's like some sometimes they show up before us and they they park in in the only spot right in front of the venue, and we got to tell them to move. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, or the, is that Fonzo's job? Yeah, that's Fonzo's job. <laughs> or they'll, they'll set up and then just stare at you till you're finished. Like, hurry up, guys! It's, isn't this our show too? And it is, but but not yet, boys. You got to kind of wait for us. For you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's always the people with the biggest insecurity that like try to pull shit like that. Like, like even in comedy, like I, like the people with the least going, the least amount going on are the biggest assholes. And the people with like the most going on are the most humble and nice and like. It's it's so fucking crazy, like seeing that. Like I I, I kind of see the similarities in music and comedy with that. It's it's nuts. Yeah, so, that can like, I can imagine an opener taking my spot. I'd flip the fuck out. I'd flip me. I mean, I'd flip the fuck. Fonzo like, Fonzo does flip out. Yeah, he, he goes <laughs> and tells him, and, and then you know, chews him out, and then it, it doesn't usually happen again. Yeah, I think um you know, I I can imagine just going up in the ranks in comedy too, and it, it's just. It's the same. It's the same exact thing, man. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, people are going to act like, like you, you know, in our business. The, the, sometimes the, the opening bands be like, oh, you, "Can you strike your drums off the riser?" And there's only one riser, and it's like, "Well, no. We just spent three hours making the fucking drums sound right." This is. <laughs> it says saliva on the marquee. You know, like kind of, kind of got to sound right, guys. You know, and and I think it's just like they're just they're just green. You know, they just don't know. That's oh, yeah. That's probably it. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you shoot for the moon, regardless? You know, I mean, I, I, mean, I totally understand that aspect. And that's how they get this far, is like by like the ambition and like and then the line stepping. And I'll, I'll have guys like I, I was making fun of Sean, I think, like this week. I'll have guys that just don't even show up to the show to open for me, and, and then they'll ask like, "All right, oh, can, I, can I get on the resty shows or what's going on? What's up with these resty shows?" I'm like, "What?" <laughs> I'm just like, like, I'm just like uh, it's just, it's just they won't even show. I'm like, you didn't even show up to your job twice this weekend, and you're asking for more. It just like made no sense. I can't even like understand. I, I'm. I, I feel like I don't know, man. I, I I'm about to have a heart attack even talking about it. it just doesn't even make any fucking. It's just like it's nuts to me, like how delusional people are. Yeah, it really <laughs> like, is. It's, it's almost fucking, like you need to give them a handbook. Like, hey, hey, this is how you, how not yeah. to be an asshole and and how not to get. It's like you're shooting yourself in the foot, man. You think the band or or you're ever gonna have them open for you again? Hell no. You know, it's like yeah, it's nuts, and they, and they don't even understand, it. and they play victim too. They're like, "Well, my dog's sad, so I couldn't make it." I'm like, "I don't care about your dog. I made a flyer." <laughs> That's what they, they'll say crazy stuff to me. I'm like, "I'm like, I don't care. I made the flyer already. You already did my job, bro." It was like that's how I feel. Like I could I could see the same thing in musicians, but but I mean, in music, I mean, the guy's taking your spot and stuff. I mean, I think. I think that shows balls, and that's why they're even opening for you already. You know, I mean, that's the next step to they open for you, and then hopefully they get bigger, and they, they're the headliner. I mean, you you almost gotta challenge it and kind of fight for your ground, I guess, and see what works. Because I mean, they, like some some bands may not be ballsy enough to call them out. You know, like like you mean some people may not call them out. You know, so it's like I, I could kind of see that. Like, and I, don't, I I respect the hustle, but I just don't understand the delusion. <laughs> like you know, it's like, or they'll they'll expect to be paid, and it's like, man, guys. You pretty much don't have any value yet to, to get paid and you do know that this is a package so that means it's going to come out of our money and sure. if you're not putting any butts in the seats then how does that make any fucking sense you need to tell every comedian you need to tell you need to have a press conference in st louis and tell every single fucking comedian what you just told me because, because i have to explain that to everyone like i i pay them still i give them like 50 to 100 bucks or something like that to open and stuff and, and then they're like well that's not even like gas winners so i'm like well you don't have any fans nobody shows up for you you don't make any money you I mean you don't make me any money i'm being nice to offer you stuff because i remember what it was like opening for people and having to like go out of pocket and like buy my food buy my gas i, I remember that's so i'm being nice offering them money and then, like, I, I, I'm, I love that you just said that because that's been like a struggle this entire week of these people. Like, I'm like, I'm like trying to pay them. I'm like, dude, you're an open micer, dog. No offense, but it's like, it's yeah. like, I mean, you start there. I mean, I'm not trying to knock it. You start there and get good, you know, build up online, build up in person, you know. Dude, I've had, I've had bands that are, that are buy ons for our tour. They're paying to be there to play, ask yep. if they're getting paid. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I don't what? make any sense either. <laughs> like, you, you yeah. paid you paid to be here you know that's that's why would i give you back like that's not how it works you know that's yeah. insane that's like insane to me too it's like and like and like i love the fact that the balls to ask this don't get me wrong i i love i love the i love the courage and stuff but it's just like delusional it's like i couldn't imagine showing up somewhere not filling it and then asking for money like i'm just like what I, like what like, you're, like i mean you didn't do your job 
Another thing, I mean, I mean, if we, of course, we'll get them water, case of beer. You know, yeah, if, we're not, if, if we're on a bus, hey guys, take the dressing room. It's not like we're total dicks. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, sure, but to a certain degree, it's like you know, guys, you know, we're glad you're out here with us. Thanks for supporting us and everything, and best of luck, and that's great and all. But uh, at the end of the day, you're you're still in, you're still brand new, and and you know, like there's no there's the promoter's not paying you separately it's the, he's paying for the package you know and and you know and like Sean, Sean said we've had buy-ons before too and I think man those those are the toughest man because you feel bad especially you you know you may not do that well in every market you go to or it might be a Tuesday night somewhere in Indiana I mean you know yeah rock music is not what it once was it's not what it once was so now you have this band that that paid to, per show to be on these shows and let's say it's a it's a weird you know it's a weird sort of night and no one's there, but they still paid and you feel bad about it, you know, but, but about and that entitled and about that entitled remark that just came up. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and I don't feel entitled about Jack shit. I fucking earned every fucking part and every, I think he means the people. Ever. No, he okay. means the openers. He doesn't mean like, you. Don't fuck with me, dude. He's talking about the openers, I think, bro. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I misunderstood. It came so <laughs> fast across there. I was like, what the fuck? Are you about to jump through that screen? I know. I saw yeah. it. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, he's talking about the open. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. So I, I thought I it was the reverse. Like, we were being dicks to them that we're entitled because we're big rock stars or some shit. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, guys. So Sorry. Whoever said that. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's like, all of our backs right here. That was good. <laughs> well, I, think the, I think the important part is, like, like, how long did it take to get where everybody's at on this screen? You know? Like, like I, got, I, I had to crash on couches. I, crashed, I, mean, I had to do so much shit to I mean, floors and couches and like whatever else. And like, I'm, I'm still a nobody dog, you know? So it's like, I'm still fighting for it, you know? And I'm, I'm like figuring that out. And I, I try to pay people like a little bit at least. So they're not like wasting their time. Like if I, if I get local openers in every market, I give them like, I don't know, at least 50 bucks minimum, you know? Yeah. And, and like, I, I don't even have to do that. I, you I don't probably, have to do any of that. You really I don't. don't yeah. You know? I don't, but I still do. Yeah, I do. Because like, I, I feel like being a little nice, it's, it's a little different than like, I don't know. Like, like music's way different. I think in that aspect, because like you have to pay five people instead of one guy. I just get like, you know what I mean? I'm like paying like one or two guys, you know, instead of like fucking four or five people, you know. Plus the manager gets a cut, the booking yeah. agent gets a cut. Yeah. You know, you have to pay your crew, the driver, the gas. I mean, everything is everything. You and then whatever's left, you split four or five away. Yeah. I mean, so it's like yeah, I'll be in a just not bus. a whole lot to go around. I mean, it depends on how big you're the band is. Obviously, if you're making three hundred grand a show, then yeah, you, you could probably you could yeah, probably help out the opener a little bit. <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know, well, but, like, um, I have a bus. I have a school bus. Like, I turn a school bus into my tour bus, and, like, and then that's that just eats diesel. And, and then like they and then they won't they won't pull anybody. And they'll, and they'll be like, man, can I get more than fifty? I'm like, dude, no one's paying you. Like, what are you talking about? I'm just like, I, I just get so mad with that. I'm like, you can like smoke all my weed on my bus and shut the fuck up. You know, it's like <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's like that's how I feel sometimes. But a lot, of, most of the guys are awesome. These are very rare exceptions that people are annoying about it. Most of the dudes are pretty chill. You know, you're right. Most of most of the bands we've been out with too have been. And if they're not respectful, or if they're if they're do if they do fuck up, we just someone lets them know, and then they don't do it no more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't it's have just, that. I don't have that. I need like bands have managers, and like, like Sean's got Fonzo just to be like, "What are you doing, Stu?" I, I need somebody like that in my corner. I feel like because I'm the one having to talk to all these people. They get mad at me, and I just don't even care if people agree with me. I'm like, I just I'm like I'm like okay, like you don't agree, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's that's like the, that's the beauty of the tour manager, dude. It's a it's a. It's an in-between, you know? Yeah, I'm jealous we, of that. We, I need to get bigger for a man. I need a manager. I need to get a little bigger. Get one of those. Get one of those. We got, we yeah, got uh, Scott Rogers. I don't know if you know Scotty, Sean. You probably you may know Scott. He's been around a long time. Um, but, yeah, he's pretty big boy. He look kind of looks like Vinnie Paul. Big, big, like a, the way he cuts his beard and stuff. He's been mistaken for Vinnie before, too. God rest Vinnie's soul, of course, man. That was total brutal that he's gone to now dime too, but, but, um, but Scotty, he'll, he'll let him know. He'll be like, boys, he'll pull him aside. Like, yeah, come on guys. You know, you gotta have that guy. Hey, Hey, uh, uh, did Tim, Tim ever tour manage, uh, you guys since you joined the band or has he been gone over eight years? Timmy, yeah. uh, I, I came in, I think right after he was out of there, we had Jay Taylor. And then, um, we had, uh, actually, Chris Vineyard tour managed way back. I don't know if you know Chris. He went on to do like Lady Gaga. It was him and Greg Scallion. So Brett Scallion's brother was teching. Oh, okay. And uh, so, and then uh, I'm trying to think who else back in the day. Um, but yeah, so so I didn't know Timmy, but they talk about Timmy all the time. But didn't he do lights though? Or was he or was he TM? 
I thought he was doing uh he, he was and, and uh sound. It was sound, yeah, okay. Okay. He he definitely uh we did one tour, like legit tour with saliva in in oh nine, I think. And okay. uh that's that's where I met Timmy originally. Um and then after that at a certain point I, I moved to Little Rock, Arkansas, which is where he was mm. from. And so we ended up hanging out you know, when we'd both be home from tour here and there in Little Rock. Um, but I haven't seen him in years, so. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, we don't even have a tour manager these days, honestly. Really? I mean, at, at this point, like, we'll have, like, an assistant tour manager that handles the merch and the, sort of the writer and stuff. So Bobby just all, all in one TM kind of. It's kind of like, I mean, to have the one guy, and, you know, Bobby – he quit drinking a few years ago, man. So he'll shoulder a lot of the TM stuff. He'll book the travel and yeah. it kind of it saves a whole salary of, 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 a you know, of paying someone, which, which helps if, 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 if things are tight, not all tours are arena tours, you know, not all tours of course you're playing clubs and bars. I mean, even if you're even in, as, as a support on a larger tour, you know, there's every, you know, you miss one show, it might screw your tour, you know, or if the bus doesn't get you there, I mean, cause it's just, you know, so, you know, like you said, rock and roll ain't what it used to be. When we it is started. not. It is not. <laughs> you know, well, you guys so. are doing bigger shows. I mean, I'm doing bars and grills across America. Bars, gr bar and grills, and coffee houses across America right now. So I think you guys are doing. You guys are both probably doing a lot better than me. I think. <laughs> so, Dude, yeah. I play. I play my share of uh, of bars and grills, man. Yeah, we don't me want too. to have a bar <laughs> and grill. Off. I would yeah. love it, man. It's like hard mode, dude. You know. Cause like, cause like comedy clubs are like, you just go there. Everybody just like fake laughs no matter what you do. I could just like make weird noises. Everyone's like, Oh, it's great. You know, you know but like, but like a bar, you have to like make everyone pay attention. You're just like, you're like, you have to, it's like, everybody's looking at their phone or drunk. Doesn't give a fuck. They don't care. You have a microphone. You gotta, you gotta get in their heads. And I love that. I love that war. You know, I love that battle. I think it's harder to play to fewer people. People oh. are like, man, all those people out there don't yeah. freak you out. I'm like, no, I love it. I'm like, it's harder if if I can see everybody like so individually <laughs> in the oh, room. Like, say the say this show didn't sell well. I'm like, I'm a wreck, dude. I don't even. I never get nervous or, or stage fright or any of that weirdness. But but those kind of shows, I'm like, it feels like they never end because you're like every second. There's no like, like you feel like the focus is so on you. You know what I mean? Like whereas when it's all spread out and there's thousands of people out there, you're like, Oh man, I'm just going to go completely crazy, you know? And just, and just, there's so much energy going on. Not that there's not energy in small. I mean, I've had some of the best shows and in, in smaller, smaller venues and stuff, but you know, it's just nerve wracking when it's real small <laughs> or it's like an acoustic thing at a bar and grill. And then it's like, really, you know, it's really like, you can't fuck up. <laughs> There's no hiding it, you know. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, so, you, yeah. Kind of, you see like a failure too. So I, I had a couple of those, like in like uh, like the the bar, but the bar owner in like Link, in Lincoln, Nebraska, did like he split up the show into like two shows. So 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 one show had people, the next one didn't. Like not even the oh. staff was there for it, bro. So it was, I'm just I, there's video of it. It looks hilarious. I'm gonna put that online at some point. It, it, but it, it's like it's like hilarious. I'm literally just like talking to literally other three other comedians in an empty bar because they split the show in half. Oh. And, I'm just, and I'm just like, I just feel like an idiot. I'm just, I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, why did I leave my bus? I could have just sat in my bus and like played like Fortnite. You know? So why did I get out of my bus? Those are the moments that you have some of the most depressing conversations with yourself in your head. Dude. Totally. Like you said, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Like, man, you know, you, you start deep diving. You're, you know, you're, you're going in your head and those are off. Those are not fun to play. Yeah, no, it's not at all. Or if you're yeah. having technical problems and it's uh, one of those and you're like, we're gonna start that one again. <laughs> I hate that. The only like starting the fucking song is like the worst <laughs> possible thing that could ever happen to anybody, dude. So, that's crazy. I've had some mics go out. I had some mics. I could imagine the whole band though. That's crazy. I've had a guitar or a bass guitar handed to me that was at a half step out of tune, or it was just I don't know if someone, I don't know what happened, but someone fucked with it. And in a lot of Saliva's songs, the bass doesn't stop from the second it starts. So I can't just kind of run over there i mean it's going to be pretty fucking obvious so anyhow um we had to we ended up having to stop this and i was having some other problems too that's with the base. crazy with, i couldn't imagine some problems, stuff man. sometimes we're on rental gear too man if we fly into a show and it's not our own gear and you hope that they check the gear before you get it 
And it's there's never the gear you ask for. Never. <laughs> we did this. We did this one show, like kind of. It's kind of a local one, like in like I'm from St. Louis and like St. Charles. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the area. Like St. Charles is pretty close to it. And like uh, we're doing this at a bar, and the guy that booked it had like a tiny guitar amp he wanted me to talk out of, and, and like and like it, it was just shorting the whole time. I'm like, I, I'm just gonna yell at people without this. I just like, didn't even use. It. I just yell. I'm like, I'm like, I'm just gonna yell and like just do my set yelling instead of, instead of use your, your your tiny practice guitar amp. That's just, tough to scream like, but like still be talking though. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, that's yeah, that's had been tough, man. Like, well, it, it didn't do well, you know. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> Why is he screaming at us? Well, because we couldn't hear him otherwise, you know. Yeah, it was just yeah. They, it kept like shorting, and it was like such a tiny, like one of those practice guitar amps. It was like it was just I can't believe the guy did. I can't believe that was his sound equipment. I'm like I'm like I I, I just can't believe you think like that. These people think like this. <laughs> Like and we, we flew all the way to Okinawa um, in uh, it was the end of April. And, you know, this year we had we've had a tough year or, or not to bring the, the, the thing down, but um, our, our the, the, the lead guitar player, Wayne Swinney, who is the OG guitarist of Saliva, which was really the last person from the original band that was still kind of carrying the torch. Is, is Paul not there anymore? Paul's not there anymore. We have uh, Sammy Joe Bishop on drums. She's been with us about a year. She's she's awesome. We love Paul, though, of course. Paul, you know, I, I think it was one of those things where maybe Paul just, had, you know, I don't know if he really wanted to do it as much anymore. I, I don't really know. I mean, it wasn't between he and I necessarily, or him and the band. I think there was some things that couldn't get worked out, and ended up he ended up leaving the band. But um, but Wayne um, Wayne passed away. Um, we were, yeah, that was awesome. Sorry about you. yeah, we were, uh, yeah, we just started a tour and, um, he, you know, he was acting, I mean, he, he was older than us, you know, he was the oldest guy in the band and, and, uh, he was acting kind of, uh, kind of tired, you know, but, but it was like, he was like, man, I, he was on blood pressure meds. And I guess one of them, he's like, one of these pills makes me like completely just want to sleep all day for hours at a time, whatever. And um, so he was having some health problems, you know, and and we so we had a day off in Sarasota after we played there and we shot a video for the new single that's out now. Um, um, Come back stronger. Oddly enough, the song is called Come Back Stronger. Wow, um, dude, that's that's a trip. It's, it's weird. Right. And so so anyway, he he. Uh, the next show, I think we played up in Fernandina, like kind of near Jacksonville, you know, our hometown. So so. I flew into the next show, which was Nashville. We were playing Brooklyn Bowl on like a Monday night, which was kind of an odd. No one plays on Monday. You know, it's weird. But it was a good turnout. We had a good show. Um, and, oh, I meant to say, like, during the video shoot, like, Wayne had to, like, physically sit down after he was playing. And he, he normally wouldn't have to do that. I mean, it's a three-minute song. So this is a little odd for us, you know? Um, so anyhow, we get to Na we get to Nashville, play the show, and it was everything was fine, you know? And then next thing you know, we're rolling into Pittsburgh. And Bobby goes to the back lounge and, you know, um, sorry, a little tough. No, it's not. <sighs> no worries. Um, so Bobby goes to the back lounge and um, he uh, he finds Wayne there and he's barely responsive, you know. And it was just, uh, thankfully, we were about four miles from a hospital in the, in the Pittsburgh area, you know. So, so um <clears throat> We get him to the hospital and we called ahead. And uh, <clears throat> so so we call ahead and they, we were met with by like 12 people. They get him on the stretcher. They get him in the hospital. But um, they had to life. They had to fly him in a helicopter to I guess it was University of Pittsburgh. And because they had a trauma center, the hospital we brought him to didn't have a trauma center. You know, so <clears throat> so anyway, man, he he uh, they did some tests and his, his, they scanned his brain. He had had a, a, I guess, a spontaneous hemorrhage in his brain, and there was no activity when they scanned it. <clears throat> so, yeah, man. Yeah, crazy, man. Like, yeah. But I'm sorry you had to go through that and experience that, man. That's uh, it's still tough, man. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, I think about him. I hear his voice. It's like so weird. I'm like, he's still around. I hear his like he had such like the way he talked and his the way he would joke around and just just him as a, as a person and an energy. Like he had no ego. Like on stage, you're like, man, that guy's scary. He he had that swagger, and he was a hell of a, a lead player. Like he looked like just a badass. And he'd come off stage, and he was like the most real, like down to earth person you would ever could ever be around. It's just the coolest person ever, you know. Like, and he was he was loyal, and he was he was 
it was just, man, we did the celebration of life for him actually um, in Memphis um, about a month later and stuff. And so it was just, man, fucking weird year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so we canceled everything after that. We, we played, you know, we, we had some shows that we kind of were, we couldn't really back out of. And, and thankfully his fill in, Josh Kulak has been filling in for him, <clears throat> you know, uh, ever since. And, you know, we're, but we're going to do a tour with Drowning Pool coming up September, October, which should, which should be fun. Love the Drowning Pool guys. They're great. I mean, know them guys a long time too. So, but yeah, man, it's just, you know, I've never lost a band member like that. I've lost a family member. Uh, we all have, but you know, it, it's, it's almost can be worse at times, dare I say, because this is somebody that you're, you're spending moments with that, you might not spend with a family member, even though you're blood related, you know, if that makes sense, you know, um, it, touring with people is, is a, it's just a connection that you don't get in, in normal life. Typically, you know, it's like, I mean, you're, you're roommates, but your roommates in a tiny space. Very small. And that bus you, ain't, it looks big, but it ain't that big. <laughs> you're, you're just living on top of each other and, and dealing with each other. And, and, uh, it's definitely like a brotherly bond yeah. that, that occurs, you know? Yeah. That hit the rock community hard too, man. I remember seeing, I remember seeing all just a lot of posts and stuff that people didn't even know him personally were just affected by it. You know, it's like, I mean, that was just like a, that was a huge L for the rock community. I think, man, just like that, that's just, that was just crazy, man. Like, I couldn't imagine that. God bless you guys and your family and all that. That's just nuts, man. Like, thanks, man. I mean, it's one of those things where I kind of look over and feel like I might see him over there again. You know, it's yeah. so strange. It's it happened. No one really saw it coming. It, it happened like. All of a sudden we're out and we're just getting kind of going. We're ripping, man. We're just starting to kind of hit a stride. You know, we're about five shows in, maybe whatever it was. And you know, the first couple of shows, you're gonna it's gonna take a minute for everybody to kind of get get it together. It just that does, at least spot. for our band. <laughs> you know, I don't know about the same for your band, Sean, but oh no, it definitely. just takes a minute to get it going, man. So so yeah. we're like, man, we're we're feeling pretty good here. This is this is good, you know. And <clears throat> man, it was just you know, it's one of those things, man. And it's even just seeing like uh, what happened with Taylor Hawkins and, and the foos. And I mean, man, that's, that was, that was tough to see that. And I don't know either one of those guys, any, you know, it's just, man, it's, it's, it's tough to lose bandmates, you know? Well, it's crazy. I, I didn't realize that, that when that happened, that you guys were all out on the road. I mean, that's, I didn't that, either. That's a yeah. really, it's a crazy thing in the first place, but for that to happen, on a tour like that in the bus. I mean, that's, that's intense, you know, we you know he had had problems before man and hit team 20, dude. That's right. Randy. Hell yeah, man. So it was funny. Cause you know, I'm from Jacksonville, of course. So Wayne always rooted for the, the Raiders never figured out why. <laughs> I mean, he has tattoos, Raiders, this and that. And I'm like, Wayne, you're from Memphis, dude. <laughs> Why the fuck do you like the Raiders? <laughs> it makes no sense, but, but whatever. And I'm from Jacksonville. I have to root for the Jaguars. I don't have a choice, man. This, you know, we don't have anything else. So anyway, so for better or worse, you know, we've had some weird years. Actually, it's it's looking better though. I gotta say, it's looking better. So Trevor Lawrence and everything, and, and and badass coach now. But but anyway, so um, where was I going with this? Oh man, shit, I lost my train. Sorry. Oh dude, <laughs> um, yeah. Man, anyway, um. I don't know what I was saying, dude. That kind of probably shouldn't have mentioned Wayne because now I'm all fucked up. <laughs> no, I get it, man. I get that's nuts, man. I couldn't imagine losing a buddy like that. It's nuts, man. Yeah, that's that's a super emotional thing, man. It must be, I mean, hard hard to talk about, you know, to to relive it in a in an interview format like this. I wasn't even gonna bring it up just because I didn't know what the yeah I was yeah what, I know what, what I was saying, man. It was, it was it, it, like he had had problems before where he he had to like with pneumonia or something like we were playing in Germany and um, it was, it was like a European tour and um, with like crazy town and some, and some other bands. And at the end of the tour, he had to go to the hospital. It was winter time. It was like snow on the ground. Like it was snowing the whole time we we're in Germany and uh, he had to go to the hospital and couldn't go. We were going to Australia after the German tour, after the European tour. And he couldn't make Australia cause he had to go cause he had, was having lung problems. So, me, Paul, and Bobby still had flew to Australia and had to make good on the shows. It was like, so, so when this happened to him in the bus, we were like, oh, he'll bounce back, man. He'll be fine. You know, he, he'll be good. And, and, and he didn't, you know, so it, it, it just was, was one of those things, man, where, you know, we just maybe thought that he had like a, 
Randy's a longtime fan. I don't know if you're seeing that. He's popping up on the screen. He's he's in Jacksonville too, man. He's a longtime supporter of my of my my bands I've been in and, and, and myself. Awesome. Dude. But okay, enough of that, man. Let's let's get on to something. Something else. Tell me some jokes, Anthony. Come on, man. You're a comedian. <laughs> Get with I didn't me, say man. I was a good one. I didn't say I was a good comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I was a good bass player, but shit, look what I managed to do something. Shit. <laughs> yeah, if you straight face it long enough, you get all the you get all the rewards, right? Yeah, like, yeah man. It's like, who, who's some of your favorite uh, bands, man? Like, what do you, what what kind of who, who do you who do you kind of fuck with today? You know, like, what are you listening to? Ooh, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that one. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy, but I just want to know. Yeah, I just want. I'm curious. No, I mean, how... honestly, there's not a whole lot of stuff kicking my ass right now, especially within my own with the rock and metal stuff. I mean, there's some. Uh, I mean, I don't know, dude. Silence. Does that count? Dude, the air conditioner, man. Right? The air conditioner. I mean, no, honestly, I mean, there's some good stuff out there. I'm not not knocking new bands, but. I don't know, man. If I, I, think I, am... it's a, I think you touched on some too. Like I, th I think basically, like as I get older, the, I don't really fanboy anything anymore, like I did as a kid. Like, no. like, like, so, like I almost see like rap is like uh, marketing for the privatized prisons and pharmaceutical industry. Uh, I see. I, I mean, I see. I see like countries kind of pandering. I see. I mean, I see EDM is like alarm clock noises. I mean, it, it, I mean it's just like I, I, the older I get, the more I just don't even care anymore. And uh, and it, but it's weird. I was just yeah, I was just wondering. But I just always ask I mean, honestly, you know, uh, of course, there's certain bands, and, and uh, of course, bands in my friends' bands when they come out with something new, I, I'm gonna listen to it and I'm gonna support their stuff and everything. I guess it's just one of those things where if I'm not on the road and if I'm not touring, I'm probably trying to create my own music in my own situations. So I'm not necessarily one of those guys that everyone's like, I just put my music on and I just drift away, man. That's all I need. Huh? You know, I'm like, <laughs> fuck that. I'm if I'm doing if uh, if if I'm gonna do music. When I'm not having to do music and play fucking, you know, on the road or whatever, I'm gonna do with something. I'm gonna create something myself. I think, you know what I mean. And and man, your your ears and your 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 mind can only take so much, man. You know, like after night after night of having click, bink, bink, bink in your ear and and drums and you know shit going on. I'm like, when I come home, I'm like, I ain't cranking the radio or, or anything too loud. Honestly, it's work. You know, yeah, no, that makes it, it's it's like. And if I am, I'm, I'm, I'm again trying to make make something new myself, you know. So, um, but I, I thought that you might ask that question, and I was like, man, what the fuck am I gonna say? Because <laughs> I don't want to lie, dude. You know, like it's 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 super typical. It's just like when when I have rock stars, I have to ask because like it's just like a person. I just I just I'm curious. I just personally wanted to know. Your answer or, is I know hilarious to me though, dude, because I am like in the same boat, and very few people can relate to that. Like yeah. people always act very surprised when they ask me you know what i listen to and i'm just like a lot of times fucking nothing because i don't yeah. even want to hear anything i'd rather yeah. drive in the silent car and listen to the tires on the road it's, it's amen it's, me too <laughs> it's more peaceful you know that when the, the music that i do find myself enjoying listening to is is typically really soft at this point like, like i agree very man. Mellow and calming. i mean a lot of people may not me for this but John Mayer put out a record called um, Born and Raised years ago, and it's kind of rootsy. And I think critics panned it or they, they didn't like it. It's one of my – it's one record I, I will listen to or, or you know, yeah. stuff like some deeper alternative stuff too. But, but like, again, if I'm driving to the airport to go to, a, to, to meet the bus or whatever, it's – the radio is off. <laughs> I'm not listening to this shit. Or I'm listening to, to you know – you know, some some weird thing on YouTube about Bob Lazar or, or remote viewing or or, you know, like uh, William Cooper or, or JFK conspiracies or I'm trying to learn shit, you know, or I'm, I'm trying to figure yeah, out man. about the Illuminati or, you know, I, I'm kind of into uh, I probably drive my band crazy, but I'm like, do you know about Jekyll Island and the Fed? Do you know what happened at Jekyll Island? I mean, and they're like, well, yeah. come on, dude, conspiracy. I'm like, no, it was actually formed. You know, a bunch of bankers got together in Jekyll Island, 1910, and they actually made plans to make the federal reserve bank to basically take over power the power it, reigns of the, the united states of america to, to start a cartel that was no, neither federal nor was it a, a reserve they, they 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 basically print money and then charge the government interest on the money they print so right when the government country. could technically print their own fucking money but instead they just given the power to do that to this private company right this private bank and then they pay interest on the money as if they borrowed it it's fucking crazy what up, Michael? Exactly, dude. And that's and so so the, the, the actually the, the Jekyll Island story goes a little deeper than them just meeting there. I don't know if you've been, get, gone into this. I follow a guy 
Robert Sepperher. And um, so apparently there was, a, do you know him? So look up, and it also kind of ties into the Titanic and stuff too. <laughs> not, not sure if you've made that connection. But there was interesting. The that were on there, yeah. Yeah, well, they were on there, and there were certain people like J.P. Morgan that didn't make the trip, but he was right. He, he bailed the day before. Right, right. Last so minute should, uh, cancellation. Yeah, and the thing went down. So, and you notice, there's never been really a ship like that hit an iceberg before that, nor ever since. Hmm. Wonder if it was torpedoed. Who knows, right? Plus, the uh -huh. thing was, it was it was made to withstand an iceberg. The thing was built like a freaking brick shit house i mean it was like you know like anyway look it up man he, he's, he's got some interesting stuff about how the uh the rockefellers and some of the major money uh people in the game um sort of built these cottages on jekyll island and one of the cottages i think the rockefeller one was built on a, a, a uh an altar that was like a sacrificial altar and in that room is where the fed was conceived by those bankers so it there's always, evil all over that shit. <laughs> that is crazy, dude. You know, it always starts with ritual with these people. You know, yeah, it does. It really does. And, and you, Brad, you know, if if you're a fan of uh, Bill Cooper, love it. Yes, and you, like, and you like to listen to that type of of stuff, you should check out. He had this radio show called The Hour of the Time. Hour of the Time, okay. And uh, he he ran. It was a shortwave radio station that he started himself out of his his compound in Arizona. Okay. And he did a, a 47 or 48 part series called, uh, what's it called? The Mystery Schools, I believe. Okay. And okay. Uh, so it, each episode's an hour. You know, obviously there's about 47 or 48 hours there. Of I'm in, bro. That ain't nothing. <laughs> it's, it's I got through Game of Thrones, dude. Come on. It's, it's, <laughs> it's basically like a, uh, just, a college course on secret societies from the beginning to up through when, you know, I think he recorded that in the nineties. I'll um, definitely check it out. I actually have a book by Mark Booth called the secret history of the world. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, that, that mm -hmm. book goes way back to the beginning and, and it, 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 it really, it really gets deep into, into things. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. A lot of esoteric and a lot of uh, different things going on in that book that, I think would interest you too. And also there's something out called from JFK to nine 11 that y'all might find interesting too. This guy, um, he's a, he's a British like investigative journalist and he basically goes back way back in history and starts just kind of dissecting sort of where some of this stuff kind of came from and how it came to be and how, um, I guess, you know, like certain members of the CIA back then that uh, became presidents and then their kid became president. Anyway, so y'all should check it out, man. It's it's called From uh, from JFK to 9-11. It's long. It's like three and a half hours, but the dude breaks it down and you're like, what? You know, it's... it's I think we're going through the renaissance right now. Like, 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 like this, a lot of the stuff was being said about like Jones and some other people and Cooper and like like back in like like 90s 2005 everybody's like nah whatever but now like we're seeing it's true and like everybody's like everybody's almost on the same page I, I mean not everybody but a lot of people are on the same page now where it was just like a handful of people that understood this at one point yeah I think, I think it's really interesting to see where this all goes like this uh this like, kind of renaissance we're having you know we know the the i guess they're having a congressional hearing tomorrow concerning the ua <clears throat> the uap phenomenon you guys follow on that one i'm not there's so many a whistleblower by the name of David Grush, or Grush, however you pronounce it, came forward and he was like a top. I mean, my wife's probably going to kill me for talking about this shit with y'all. She's like, God damn it, this again? <laughs> UFOs, you know, whatever. But anyhow, I, I, y'all seem like y'all are kind of into it or like you would be at least open minded enough to, to, oh, yeah. to yeah, sort of sure. to dig it. But, but yeah, that's right. He was. His name was Prescott Bush. That's totally true. Read yeah. that line there. That's right. What well, you know, like Sean's band and like Head P were talking about this like a decade ago or more, and then and, and like I, I feel like I just kind of recently got into it and like had like uh we had like David Icon at one point. And I'm like, and I was like asking like I go, I thought you were like Looney Tunes when I was a kid, and like now everything you said's happening. <laughs> like I'm just like yeah yeah it's just, like it's just crazy like yeah man it's it's getting so weird man like you know there was a guy too I, he he made a speech um and it was it was I want to say. God damn, it was a long time ago. It was uh uh 
man, I, I wrote it down. I'd, I'll have to look for it for you guys. But it, and he basically outlines everything with the whole new world order and and how things are going to kind of sort of, you know, are being pushed in that direction to 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 being a one world globalist, one one society, one government. And you're seeing now, too, that the United States government just recently slipped by the old central bank digital currency thing. Oh, yeah. So the dollar has been sort of, you know, a lot of countries aren't even using the dollar anymore. It's being kind of phased out. It, it's kind of getting a little scary, bro. Like, And so now if they have a digital currency that the government controls, uh, <laughs> wait a second, that don't make no damn sense because – if they don't like what you're doing, they could just take everything. You, if they can do that now, the IRS can come in and take your shit now. But but you know what I'm saying? It's harder now. It's harder now, though. Yeah. Now they yeah. can see. All what it you're is saying. is the click, the click of a fucking mouse for them to to turn you off if you say the wrong thing on social media, and that's yeah, what no, it's I've lost so many like like high profile verified accounts just from like being myself. You know, like, I mean, like Twitter, Facebook, all that. You know, I mean, I definitely. I mean, yeah, they're gonna do that with your car. They're gonna do that with your like your bank account. They're gonna do that with your bank account. That's what they want. Yeah. That's the end game. And you're, and you're seeing Elon Amazon Musk came the the now. Amazon's letting you pay with your hand now. Yeah. And I'm right. just like, dude, are they just like ripping off the revelation, or like is this <laughs> really happening? You're, That's you're crazy. Say, yeah, no shit. It's, How's it's, that it's, work? How, how the like I'm too, I was too afraid to read it, man. I, I just yeah. read I read the headline. I'm like, I don't want to know about this right now. Sean probably yeah. knows it. Everyone's handprint is unique. It's unique, so, like your fingerprint. I get um, that, but but I it's, mean, it's literally just scanning your hand. There's no, there's no mark or tattoo or chip or anything like that. But yeah. it's, uh, it's, 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 it's like the printing wheels for it, though. It feels like that's what that's what the headlines. Like. They're just they're they're normalizing that. Yeah, and then because that's how they they always do it, as David Ike calls it, the totalitarian tiptoe. You know, yeah, <laughs> just. If they, just, that thing, yeah. if they just throw it all on you at once, you're going to freak out and fucking fight back. And if they if they just tiptoe it there, you'll accept it step by step. Well, they know? were they were talking about the vaccine, like depopulation tactic on like on like that Jesse Ventura show or whatever, like like decades ago, like a decade ago or more. Let's like, yeah. They're, they're yeah. talking about that. I mean, like all this stuff's coming out and it has been forever. I mean, it, 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 you're going back and looking at it like you're like, wow, they've been saying this for a second. But I mean, you couldn't have told me that in 2005. I wouldn't have believed it, you know. Have you seen a Rob Schneider? I mean, he, he's, I think he's one of us, but he, he's yeah. like, um, he's like, he's doing his stand up, and he's like, you know, Bill Gates basically said that, you know, they're going to try to control the, the, the population, mm -hmm. you know, and, but he's, but in, 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 in the quote from Bill Gates, it's from like a talk he was given saying, Head basically, talk, yeah. say, saying basically that the, the vaccines are going to, which are supposed to help people are going to actually curb the 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 population by however many people and Rob Schneider and people are saying to Rob Schneider oh that's a conspiracy man it's a conspiracy he's like no he he just said it I don't it's, there's sure. no conspiracy he just fucking said it you know? I've showed people that clip I've, I've showed people that clip and like people from LA are like that's fake I'm yeah like, yeah I'm like what like he's just like I'm literally showing them exact evidence and they won't believe it it's, it's crap yeah no that's not me I've shown people that video that like praise bill gates to think he's a philanthropist and a wonderful oh. human being and i've shown them that and it's interesting to watch them do these mental gymnastics to try and make it make sense because it doesn't unless yeah. he's talking about murdering like fucking billions of people you know systematically but doing so with with a, by a means that they don't either understand or that was forced on them and and they didn't really even know what those mrna th those vaccines do they didn't have enough time uh, or did they? I mean, if they're the ones that maybe yeah, put them out there time. to, to it, start it, with, it does yeah. what they intended. Let's just put it that way. Everything exactly. they do does what they intended to do. Yeah. It's and yeah. then when the when what they intended to do actually starts happening, they can always just say, Whoops. "You know, we oh, we didn't know. Yeah, yeah we had to uh, get that together real fast for you people, and and uh, and we and did we had to do our best." to force you to use it and to take it, or you couldn't be a member of society unless you did. Absolutely. And then now we're going to give you your freedoms back now that we injected this shit into you. I mean, seriously, like that's a little, that's, I mean, what, what is that, man? I mean, that was, and we experienced it too, just being in bands because, you know, <clears throat> there were certain venues that if you weren't, if you didn't have, if you know, you weren't jabbed, you couldn't get in the door to see the band, you know? So we, we lost, we lost so many shows um just just from that whole situation of oh what well, like we went to alaska but the people in alaska 
they they don't care. You know, it's like it's like the wildest of the wild west because they're further west. <laughs> you know, yeah. they loved it. So we we actually our first shows back were in Anchorage and in Fairbanks, and they were outdoor shows with Alien Ant Farm and uh, and Framing Hanley and stuff. And it made the Anchorage paper. And it's like, oh, promoters take the risk and and it, but but you know the promoters they had hand sanitizer, they had. Uh, they had masks for everybody at the event, you know, but it was like, they don't have to come to the event either. You know, it's your choice. Don't show up, whatever. But we had some of our first shows back were in Alaska, dude. We had a blast. So what we kind of had to do after that first six months or eight months or of no shows at all, we kind of had to operate in places that had the same philosophy as that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like basically... Oklahoma, Texas, Florida, <laughs> you know, certain, certain areas weren't as, you know, all of our states, all, all three of our states are pretty on point with that. Uh, you're in forties in Arkansas and Missouri. They, none of us cared about that. And yeah. it, it, was, it was, it was sold to me. Like if you want to see Jeffrey Epstein's friends in concert, you better get vaccinated. And I'm just like, no, thanks. You know, it's, that's like, that's how it sounded to me. I'm just, I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm good on that, bro. I'll fucking, we, yeah, we, we, we even canceled the, 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 any show that we had that was requiring the vaccine. I was just like, we did too. I was yeah. just good. Dude. Awesome. And, and we, our bands are two of the only bands that took that stand. I mean, yeah, there was like uh this guy, this country guy that I like Coulter wall. He did that. Coulter and, Wall's um, great. I'm, I'm trying to think that I think there was like one or two others that did it, but I mean, it was really a shame that rock music couldn't represent you know, anti-government, anti-control, anti-censorship sentiments in that moment. Yeah, which you, was, you was built on rebellion. It was built on. We played Sturgis. You know, we played at a full throttle, and um, uh, during the, the the I guess that that summer, I guess, or maybe it was the summer after. But they had had they had drawn or, or spray painted like these boxes where the bikers were supposed to stand. <laughs> like, do you really think these guys are going to stand in the box and watch the fucking show? Come on, bro. <laughs> you know, and, and they didn't. And, but we played and that was the year or the time, uh, it was uh Smash Mouth took a lot of shit. My buddy was playing drums for I was gonna bring it up. My buddy oh, was playing okay, drums yeah, for yeah. Smash Mouth during that time. He like, like uh Sean uh Sean something, I forgot his last name right now, but he was he's on my uh he, he was he was told me about that. Like dude, he, like they they were they were pissed at Smash Mouth. <laughs> it was weird, dude. But so, somehow we kind of flew under the radar. We got in, we played our show, and we got out. And I guess they didn't care enough about us to write about us or give a shit. I don't know what the problem was, but or what the deal was, but we were okay with it because I mean, we, we, I mean, come on, man. It was, it was just, you know, we still had to, to sort of, like you said, take a stand and, and still also do what we thought was, was right for us and for our band and for the fans and for the people. And then they're like, Oh, well, after that bike rally Sturgis in the area, you know, had saw this, they saw this, this, this spike in COVID cases. I'm like, that's impossible because the thing ended. It's only like, what is it a week? You know what I mean? And went, they, everyone went home. And they're like all these, all these cases in the in the Sturgis and and and, and Rapid yeah, City area. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, no, there's it. not, no, there's not. Show me, come on, man. Yeah, I, I, I was just in South Dakota. Nobody lives there. Everybody's from somewhere else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> love <laughs> South Dakota though. I love that. It's love a great. It. It's so. It's, it feels like freedom in America. Let's look at this shirt, bro. Let's look at this wolf shirt. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's awesome. It is yeah, a good state, though. <laughs> I mean, well, we, our band pretty much does does um you know the bike week the bike rally there pretty much every year and i had done it before in other bands and stuff um, do you ever do it sean you guys ever do yeah i've done it once it's 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 a good time man we've had good times out there i mean it's yeah. uh but yeah, um, like, the drummer for smash mouth from like los angeles i think he's like a session drummer i remember like people arguing on his facebook about it when he did but when they when uh, smash mouth played there and, and i'm like what timeline am i in where smash mouth is controversial like it was, it was, yeah. it was just like they're catchy and i'm not trying to i'm not trying to shit on them or anything but but it's just like dude like they're the least controversial band in the world right like, i mean there's not marilyn manson up there or whatever from our they're the, from our they're the, shrek, they're the shrek soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> the total pop happy music that's a happy thing yeah. man nothing wrong with that but it's it's very happy music and they're yeah, not yeah. like you know trying to 
to get in the political game either or do anything weird or, or make a stand against anything I don't they're think all, that I know of. You know, They're all session guys, except for the bass player now. Like they're, they're oh. all uh, The bass player is the original member, I think. They're all session guys now. I think the singer quit after that Sturgis thing. He went on some like rant about it, just like just like yelling at everybody and calling them all idiots and stuff. And then <laughs> he went on some like rant about it. Like just like, he's like, I don't care what you guys think, you know? And now they got some new guys singing for him. And like, they do uh, have a new singer. I know that much. Yeah. yeah we had the guitar player and the bass player on the show before. And they're, they're, they're session guys. Yeah. They're, they're, mostly just uh guys who just kind of joined it later and stuff i mean you know a lot of the uh missile silos are in south dakota right the nukes that kind of makes yeah, sense i, I, did, I, I do know that Actually, oddly enough we stopped one time typically we would route tours and we would kind of once around sturgis and we would then we would just head west and kind of go through of course montana um Wyoming, Idaho, all the way to Washington. Then we'd usually come down through California and then head back out Arizona, kind of do that kind of number was how they would usually try to route us. Um, so anyhow, we're going through South Dakota. And we stopped at this, this, it was a truck stop. I can't remember the township, but apparently near there was one of the main, like one of the nuclear um, bases with all the, <laughs> like a shitload of nukes. And they're like, well, they've been de decommissioned since then. I'm like, no, they sure. haven't. Come on, they're still they're somewhere. They may have been moved, but they're you know anyhow. So there was a bunch of them right there in uh, in South Dakota. There, there may still be. I don't know. I don't know. It clicked it, as soon as you said that. That clicked. But I it, but I would have never known that. I would have like like it totally makes sense to be nukes there. Like, yeah. like we we just went through like all we drove like a we drove a school bus through the Badlands just like a couple like a month ago. Like, sure. I, I, I I love it out there, man. Like, that's like one of the like. Uh, you, you guys ever go to that wall drug town? My wife is obsessed with that place. Like, Dead, <laughs> Deadwood, man. Deadwood's cool, too. Yeah. Deadwood, is, Deadwood cool. is cool, yeah. dude. I love that little town. Dude, yeah, I love the big, whole – that whole state rules, man, honestly. Oh, yeah. I drove through the winter one time, and I was like, I was like, I hate this. And then I came back in summer, and I'm like, oh, it was okay. I, like, yeah. I was like, that, that's, that, you can't live there because it's too fucking cold. It's too It's brutal. cold. It is but, cold. But it is a, a great state. In a they gave me a, they gave me a driving ticket going like going like ninety six miles an hour past like the Mount Rushmore or something like that. And then and like they, they they sent me all this mail like like you lost your hunting and fishing license in South Dakota. I'm like oh my god man you guys really got me you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, one time we were rolling through there right, and it was someone's bright idea in the band instead of take a bus to take an RV. So we're in an RV, and we Charles had this Trump. this guy driving us or whatever. And we're going down the road, and all of a sudden, this horse, like a wild horse, starts galloping up, up the the embankment, up to the road. And I'm like, if this thing cuts us off, dude, we're dead. I mean, it's a big ass horse. It's a, it's a fucking wild horse, you know. So, <laughs> so he's crazy. galloping along us, and he kind of looks looks at us, and I'm like, don't do it, buddy. Don't do it, buddy. Don't do it, you know. And he's galloping along, galloping along, and all of a sudden he looks, and then he just he just turns right back down. Cause you know, they got wild horses out there. They got freaking oh, bears and pigs and all kinds of shit running around out there, whatever. But yeah, man, thank God he didn't, he didn't cut us off for nothing. And, and <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get oh, selfies with Buffalo, bro. But they're, they're, they're nuts, man. I was, I was yeah. trying, I was, trying, I, was trying, I was like, they got so much wildlife up there. It's such a beautiful place, man. Like I, I, I love that state, man. Like, Oh, I love it, man. I want to do, I've never done a show there. I want to, I just don't know where the people are at there. You know, I have to do a show at wall drug, I guess, to get people. It's like two, two Falls is good, man. I mean, they're okay. kind of a cool little town, like uh, in South Dakota. We 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 actually have had days off there before, and we'd hit. Well, a lot of times we would hit Sioux Falls before Sturgis, and uh, it is Tito's and lemonade. You're correct, light lemonade though. <laughs> that's my boy Michael. <laughs> yep, yep, that's in the cup. Uh, so yeah, so uh, we would hit the pawn shop so and buy like a like a little dirt bike or something to ride at Sturgis. Um, That's awesome. you know, like a little, just like a little pit bike or something, you know, and then we would just give it away or whatever after we were done with the bike rally, but we'd have something to cruise around the grounds or wherever we were, we were staying and stuff, you know? Um, but, um, they have great pawn shops there. If nothing else, <laughs> in Sioux Falls, you should check them out. I would usually, when I, when we tour, I'll usually buy like a bike and like a skateboard that way, you know, if things are sort of close ish, I'm not relying on some kind of like a Uber or whatever, and I could just bike around and kind of get out of the area for a while. And, That's uh, awesome. It, I was looking to get some e-bikes for that reason. Like just, uh, it was it? Cool. I, I usually bring a giant bus everywhere. I mean, I, I took a train here. I took a sleeper train here where I'm at right now. 
But like, uh, I just, I just love that. But uh, but yeah, usually I bring a bus. I don't want to drive a bus everywhere, you know. So I, I try, I'm looking at like an e-bike or something. For that exact reason you're saying, like, it's a good thing to have to just kind of. I mean, for me, like, I get enough of being on the the tour bus. So it's like, okay, we're here. Bye bye. I'm out of. I, I like. I got to get out of there for a minute and just sort of remember what a human being is supposed to be like and how they're supposed to normally act and, and, and not travel like that as much. And, you know, just the kind of the madness that can happen out there. And, and, and uh, so it's, it's actually, it helps so much just to kind of leave the, the area and, and kind of, you know, separate it. And then you come back. Okay, good. Good as new. Let's sound check. Let's get it going. I'm back, you know, whatever. And of awesome. course, I get to see the cities because for the longest time, you know, you see the back of a of a club. You park by the dumpster, or you're parked in a in an arena that's that's the back of the arena, and you're kind of either you're stuck there, or if you're not doing radio, you know, you're kind of stuck. So it's kind of cool for us, for me at least, to have some sort of other, you know. I sat. Sorry, I, I don't have the arena problem, but I have the bar and grill problem. You know, like I just see yeah. the bar and grill the whole time. <laughs> it's like that. Man. Or like, or like you said, the dumpster in the back. I mean, that's yeah. not, yeah. how familiar of a sight is a fucking <laughs> blue ass dumpster, dude. Like, and it smells, <laughs> and and or or the bus is usually yes, Kona Skate Park. Love it, man. Um, so the bus usually, inevitably, the seal on the toilet will will somehow get compromised. Oh yeah, I don't there's use going the bus. Be, I can't use it. The yeah. There's going to be piss leaking outside the oh, bus no. everywhere you go. Just even if it's <clears> a slow <throat> leak, it's still piss. So I you can't. get out, and you got dumpster on the left, and then you walk through piss on the right. <laughs> piss like, river and shit. Oh, yeah. uh, dude, no, I, I I have a bathroom on my bus, but I, I never use that, man. I can't use that. So Sean taught me the love sauce, also. I've been using the, I've been using love truck stops and like whatever else. Oh, I got a YMCA, I got a gym membership that's like has a bunch of natural chance. I, I I mean, I freak out. I can't I can't smell that shit on my butt. I freak out. I travel with my wife, so it's like a little bit better than like five dudes, I guess. You know, so it's a little easier, but like. I don't we know. don't shit on there either. I mean, I but, I, but I, I mean, it's it's still you know that smell and 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 the urine sort of it it gets concentrated, you know, and it's like when it cooks, it cooks, it in cooks there, in you know? there. It does, yeah. It's like it's like boiled piss. You yeah. know, you're just going through there, and you're, the oh. is, it's so brutal. And then sometimes the thing will it'll sort of if someone hits the toilet, that the odor will come up into the bus. Oh man, uh, yeah, that's why I can't do that, man. I can't do. I, yeah. I, I, I'll walk outside and take a leak like an asshole before I use my own bathroom, bro. <laughs> it's just like I, I had too many. Uh, we we did too many tours in like old Eagles by the end of our tour bus days, oh. and and oh, yeah. just like real old Prevos and shit. And uh, I had too many of those moments with like, you know, sometimes it's hard to find like a place to dump and and uh, t- dump the pisser, you know, and and you're in a hurry to get to the venue and. It just ends up cooking in there in the summer oh. heat and the humidity, and it smells bad. So now we just we travel. I, I have an RV that we travel in, and we don't use the bathroom there either. It's just better to not deal with it sometimes, you know. Sure some, I'm some rookie you got out with your shits in the toilet, and you're like, dude, who shit in the fucking toilet, man? Come oh. on, bro. Oh, oh, and no one, will, no one will own up to it. You're like, man, and then it's like the one guy that you're like, it's got to be him because he's the newest one out. He, he, it has to be, you know. And they probably thought they could get away with it. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't even have a black water tank. I, I have like a toilet for like worst case. Like a, I forgot what it's called. It's like a compost toilet or something. I use. I, I would never use it though. I have it, but I never use it. It's just like, it's like a $700 toilet. I just never even use because I just can't even do that to myself. I feel like. $700 toilet, huh? That Man. I don't use. That I just Man. don't use. It's, like, it's funny because, you know, I guess also because it's sloshing around in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what water tank. Nothing else either, I, you know. Like it's kind of, you know. I have a gray water tank still, which is gross. Like it, it gets nasty in summer still, from like dishes or like shower or whatever. Like, yeah, that stuff will be gross. But you got you got levels. You can see how much is in there, right? And you just kind of you, you figure it out and you get it out of there. Or do you do you pull the thing where most bus drivers do this too? They sort of find an exit ramp, and they kind of slowly kind of go up the exit ramp the dave matthews method 
<laughs> exactly. And they sort of just let it go, like, you know. Like, like, uh, like crack it just a little bit. Just a little bit, man. And it kind of just, all right, there you go. All good when, we first, <laughs> when we first got the bus, we did that. Like, I'm not going to say where, but when we, when we first got our bus, we did that. We, like, we just, like, we just, we just opened it and drove. And, like, oh, man. Just, like, it was gray water. It wasn't, like, I mean, it isn't okay. like black water. Thing, but, like, it, it was still disgusting, probably. But it was just, like, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know about the dump sites. I didn't know about, I didn't know about any of that stuff when I first got a bus. Dude, I think we used to call that snail trailing. <laughs> and uh, and we used to we used to have to do that here and there, which we obviously did our best to not do that. But there there were some of those moments, like I said, where you can't find a place to dump to dump the pisser and and uh, it's overflowing you know, it's, or it's getting it's, it's getting it's weird it's in full, there. You know? Yeah, it's full. And uh, it just has to happen, but it's gross. We've been doing like state parks a lot too, like to where like they have a lot of dump sites and you get like twenty five dollars a day to stay there or something. Like we do, we do a lot of that stuff. Like I just didn't know that like a year ago when I got the bus. I'm like I had no idea what to even do. I was like I was like all right, I got this now. Like what do I do with it? Where do I go? We love the state parks, dude. One time we were routed and actually were able to go through like Yellowstone and stuff and and actually spend some time. Have you all ever done Yellowstone? Yeah, dude. I love Man, it. dude, it was it was so cool. Like another like good day off escape on the way to your next place to kind of see it, you know, and just do it. Like my wife and I did Zion up in uh, Utah. Have you ever been to, to Zion? Oh, I don't you? think I have. I don't think I have. Yeah. Highly recommend, man. We, we, it was for our, our 20 year anniversary. And, um, it was, it was like, man, it was incredible. It was like, like at the end of the, their season too, it was like in November. So a lot of people, you know, there wasn't a ton of people. There was a lot of people, I guess, um, um, that had already left for the season, you know, but, but we, we went up and we did, uh, we were going to do angels landing. I don't know if you're familiar with angels landing, but it's sketchy as it. So is that Utah? Utah? It's in Utah. So it's, it's, it's part of the Zion experience, but it's like, we you have to hike all the way up it. And whenever you go up, there's just literally chains to hold on to, And it drops off on both sides straight down. Nice. And that wouldn't be that bad. But the problem is, the people coming back down the mountain. So you have to like, wait, have someone come towards you. You put your hand around them, grab the chain, let them go through. And there's like hundreds of them coming down the mountain. Right. So my wife and I stopped at scouts land or scouts lookout. It was like right before Angel's landing. We're like, we're good, dude. Like, you know, it's, it's, we don't want to die today. It's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound like my kind of fun right there either. But it was so beautiful, man. So oddly enough, we, we went the other way up the mountain and a California condor landed by us. This big black condor with these white feet, right? And at first I'm like, dude, I hope he doesn't like, you know, freak out on us and, and, and gouge your eyes out. But of course, it's a vulture, so it only eats dead things. It doesn't eat anything living. And apparently the condor visitation, we looked it up and it was, there was some significance. Like, I guess they mate for life condors, you know? And they were actually so, and we were there on our anniversary. So it was kind of an interesting, you know, how it came to to us. Like literally, land. I have to have pictures. The dude was right there, man. <laughs> and um, but we didn't know any of this till we looked it up later or whatever. But apparently, those birds were almost extinct. They, it got down to like below like a hundred birds or something, you know. And um, so 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 yeah, man. And he just sat there and hung out with us until this lady scared him off. She she tried to get she like fly fly and like. I'm like, why'd you do that, dude? He was just chilling. Like, you know, he wasn't going to hurt nobody or nothing. And so everyone starts coming, rushing up the way. They're like, is there a condor up here? Like they had heard about it, that the condor had landed right there. And everyone was tripping out to see the condor. And we got to hang with him for a bit. It was cool. That that was cool. Cra that's crazy, man. Uh, as a kid growing up in California, you know, I think there were only nine left at one point or something like that. It, it got down to like a handful. Yeah. And uh, so that's cool that. To, to get to see one in person in the wild like that is not cool. I, I think some of the Native American, the, the culture, I don't know if the shaman or, or whoever in, in some of those tribes, the bird was so revered that they would wear the feathers on their backs. And they thought that it, I guess it could see into, I don't know, another dimension or another reality or, or what, what the thing, why, what they were, the significance was of, of wearing the actual feathers. But yeah, they uh, they did have a, a time there where they were almost gone, man. And yeah. So it was crazy. But that thing, dude, was huge, bro. It was like, it was like, I mean, it was just so impressive to see that out there, you know. Um, 
and, and then know the significance. But yeah, I recommend Zion hi highly. And you know, we flew into Vegas. It wasn't very far to get to Zion from Vegas. Got like three hour drive or something. But yeah, man. Yeah, Utah's kind of crazy. I, I had to change a coolant hose out there in like Salt Lake City, like uh, on the bus out there. Like you, you, Utah, Utah's wild. And Salt Lake City was like way more ghetto than I thought it would be. I thought the I thought the Mormons had their life together more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's just people like sleeping on the lawn, and, and then like, they, they like wake up and they're like, "Nice bus." I'm like, "Oh no, it's not. You don't want to see it." It was just like, you know, it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm like luxury almost to those guys. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like. A, it's like, that's can I come on your bus, man? No. <laughs> oh, I don't even have one, dude. It's not mine. You know? it's, it's like this it dismissed conversation. No, I, but uh, Utah's beautiful. Though. I wish I would have experienced more, like you're saying, like the nature aspect. Because like I drove by a lot of cool stuff. Like the salt, the salt flats were cool, and like the nature aspect were cool. I just like I didn't stop there as I was trying to get home. I think. If you ever go back to Salt Lake, um, Park City is actually a good spot. It, you just go up the mountain there. Uh, when I was in Fuel, we did a couple of shows there up in park city one of them was actually we were at you know slash from guns and roses was premiering his um he was doing slasher films he he was starting he was going to make um kind of campy horror movies mm -hmm. so we you know it was during um sundance film festival and uh, you know brett was the scallions is, was bros with slash i think um you know brett's wife abby uh his friends were friends with perla his ex-wife or whatever but at the time it was it was cool but it's a cool town up there it's kind of old mountain town like vibe you know and it was of course it was snowing and everything uh but we got to play slash's party man and he, he couldn't have been cooler dude he was that's he was awesome, awesome. and cool. brett's other band uh yukon cornelius played and that's so that's like you know mike mccready you, you know and i know uh, sean and, and brett have a lot of history yeah, they're in a band band. yeah, 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 yeah. I almost was playing bass in that band for a minute. I don't know what happened though. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, that's right. We when we talked about to actually touring, which of course never, yeah. never material, nothing materialized with that band. We made a record though, but uh, cool record well, Brad, too, man. Brad, you gotta, band, you gotta save some bands. You gotta save some bands for some other people, bro. You've been in like. <laughs> been so I, I know y'all. Y'all's intro makes me sound like a whore, dude. I'm just like, man, like. I, Actually, I'm only in saliva these days. Technically, the Society Red and Burn Season, but we don't, we don't, they're not active anymore. Oh, okay. But I, I do play with my neighbors in a band. We call it the Shell Crackers. It's like the, my neighbors, some of they're all retired. The, everybody in the band, and I'm the guy with the dreadlocks and and whatever. But we play like just blues and, and originals, and we, we do some some covers and stuff too. But but technically, I'm really pro band. It's just saliva these days. <laughs> That's like it's like we want to play bass in bands with Brad Stewart's of the bass player for every band on earth right now. I know, goddamn. <laughs> it's like we can't do it. <laughs> I mean, thankfully, I've been lucky enough. Most people only get one band, and I've been able to get like several bands that I've been. Most able people to get. get no bands. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah probably, I guess yeah. when you put it like that, I mean, it's that's. That's true. <laughs> no, oh, I, I, I count my lucky stars every day. I've never looked that gift horse in the mouth ever. Man. Well, it sounds like you work hard, man, to even be in that situation. You know, so it's like, I mean, you, you have to work hard to even have it once, probably. I think what a lot of it is, it's not even based necessarily. Uh... Most people get no bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, not going to discount that one. Uh, Almost had that Limp Biscuit tryout too. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Man, you know, my boy Sam Rivers and Biscuit, like he was having some health issues. And I did try to reach out to those guys after a, a, a mutual friend was actually with them when they were talking about bass players. And she dropped my name in the hat. And so I reached out, but, but they, you know, it was one of those things where, and I hope I didn't offend Sam by reaching out to, I wasn't like trying to take his gig or anything by any means. I knew he was coming back, but. Uh, you know, those guys are from Jacksonville. I've known those guys my whole life, too, or most of my life, I, sh I should say. So, but yeah, they, they had already made other plans for a bassist, you know, so. But man, I would have loved to get up there and rock some, you know, some break stuff and some some nookie and shit. I think that would have been cool. And I've known Fred, like I've said, since, you know, the mid-90s and stuff. So, I mean, if it wasn't for that dude, it would I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, he... He, he threw me a bone with Puddle of Mud, and, and that's what really started it for me. You know? I like Fred Durst because he didn't take himself seriously. Like, yeah, he has this tour called Limp Biscuit Still Sucks. I, I yeah. just love, I love the sense of humor in it. I, and I was a big Limp Biscuit fan, like, probably, like, like sixth grade and stuff, you know, or, like, whatever, like, middle school years. I had the red hat and everything, dog. <laughs> He'd love that, man. Yeah, yeah. he and I used to skate at Kona together. He actually was dating at one time my, my girlfriend at the time's roommate and stuff. So we hung back in the day quite a bit, and – 
you know, there was something about that dude when I first saw him. <laughs> I do it for the Nookie. Of course you do. Why else would you do it? <laughs> but yeah, so 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 yeah, I mean, he, he was, you know, he, he just had that magnetic thing about him. And god dang, they sold a gazillion records, about 30, 40 million records or something. That's something that that most people really don't ever get to experience, you know. No shit, man. Are you yeah. guys fake guitar players? What does it even mean? What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Is that an air, an air guitar? I mean, what is it? Is that a fake question? There's no question mark? I don't know. It's like, what's being? Without That's the red my hair. fucking computer. <laughs> it's blowing up right now. I'm really not going to turn that off, to be honest with you. I think it stopped. So it's let cool. me ask you this. Anthony, who are you listening to? Who who's your band, man? I listen to country gospel now, man. I, I, that's like my favorite thing right now. Like honestly, like I, I no shit. Yeah, dude, You're honestly, not- man. Like I, I love like really old country, like Hank Williams and stuff, and I like like really like uh, a lot of country gospel. Like I mean, like Josh Turner, like and like and then a lot of bands just do like um like just country gospel songs. I like a lot. I, I got into that because I knew nothing about it, and my uh, my wife's uh, grandpa plays steel guitars. Like eighty eight year old guy plays steel guitar, so like, I started going to a lot of their shows. And then, like, um, I didn't know anything about the genre, so I've just been, like, absorbing it lately. I've just been, like, completely, like, the last two years, I've just been absorbing it. And, like, I mean, I had phases with all your guys. I mean, Sean, Sean was, like, when I was 16, Smalty Soul was, like, one of my favorite bands, you know? And then, like, uh, I, I, I like your, I liked, uh, five of the bands you were in. And then, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I know. It's it's kind of. When I even when I read it back, I go, "Wow, that was that was something else." I guess. No, it's I, awesome. I, I, I just make jest of it because I make jest of it out of uh, complete jealousy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. No, no, congrats on all that, though, for real. I mean, but, yeah, thankfully, I mean, I've been lucky enough to where most. I mean, there's been uh, obviously great experience with with all the bands I've been in. You know, I mean, it's been there's been some weird ones too, and 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 you know, ba- being in a band is not what it's not as easy as uh, it, a lot of it is whether you can get along with each other on a day-to-day basis and also be in business with each other and also deal with everyone significant others and their wives. And I mean, there's, it's, there's dynamic is crazy, dude. And like, then one guy might be the singers getting all the attention. And of course, so Sean plays guitar and sings and bass and bass. So, so this dude's getting all the, to the attention of three fucking people at this point, man. So, yeah. but luckily he's cool and he doesn't, he does, doesn't go to his head, man. You know what I mean? No, he's like the only <laughs> humble dude I've ever met where he's at, man. Like most people where he's at would be such a dick dude, I think. And like, he's, he's been super humble and like, yeah, I, I tried to do the band thing. I felt like the people I was in bands with like took their job at Burger King more seriously. It was like yeah. I'm, I'm like I'm like oh yeah, you want to have band practice? And then they're like oh I got a job at Burger King tomorrow. I can't really do. I'm like what? I just I just couldn't even fathom that. And like I couldn't depend on people. Plus I sucked. You know I mean I, plus I wasn't talented. <laughs> but like I, but I feel like that that was like that was secondary almost to like people not taking it seriously. You know. Yeah. And, and I went to I went to comedy because of that because like I think like I I just love entertainment. And I'm like I'm a big rock. I'm a big like music fan and like uh, all genres really. But uh, I'm just a big music fan. So I mean. That's you look like you could be in like a super heavy, like a like a Lamb of God or like a, a heavy, like a, you know, like a metal band, man. Like with the the facial hair and shit, dude. It's ripping. It's well, like I, could, yeah, I, I could definitely be a poser if I wanted to, you know. Just, like, <laughs> you know, just, like, just hold a bass guitar and pretend like I know what I'm doing. But but yeah, like Sid Vicious, just don't don't plug it in. But uh, <laughs> but but no, I just like I I just I'm just not talented. I saw. What made me realize I was not talented was I saw Mars Volta live and I watched the singer throw a microphone stand up 40 feet in the air and catch it and flip it. I go, I'm not a musician. I'm just like, I'm not a musician. I'm, I'm a, I'm a fake. I'm going to do something else. <laughs> James <laughs> Brown had some moves like that, man. He was, sure. he was pretty badass with that mic stand. He'd kick it, throw it down, kick it back up, come right back up. Never miss one beat. Dude. That button man was yeah. bad. I was just in yeah. like a shitty local band at the time. And I went to go see Mars Volta at the pageant and I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm not a musician. This, okay. I've I'm never good. seen them live where they, where, I mean, besides the, I mean, they they put they're they're pretty they're pretty dialed live from what I hear. I've never got to see them live at Mars Volta. They're dope. They're so dope. Really? Uh, I've never seen them either. Well, I, I, Sean's drummer is fucking awesome too. I mean, Mars Volta is a good drummer. And I think Sean's got one of the best drummers right now too. Honestly, like to be honest, like I mean, I'm not just saying that. He's, he's actually who's, who's really, playing with you these days, Sean. I remember the the one guy early on, and you're like, man, I don't know about this guy, dude. He was running like wind sprints, and we're, so we're down doing like. Um, what was the two? Oh, it was um, Earth Day birthday in Orlando, and then we would do um, in Tampa in Zephyr Hills. What was it called, man? It was fucking. It was you know back to back festivals every year. You know back in the day we'd do them. Um, anyway, your drummer at the time was had his shirt off, and he was running like wind sprints back and forth between the buses and shit. And 
And you're like, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> Why is he doing this? Why can't he just go to the gym and do this? Like, it's embarrassing. It's just, like, you were so embarrassed. And I was like, I was like, maybe I just, it doesn't bother me, man. And you're like, no, dude, it ain't cool. <laughs> well, the, there was the other show that we played with with you guys in uh, Livestock was New it, Jersey. So. No, it was a club a club okay. gig. Okay. It was just you guys and us and some openers, or whatever. It was in New Jersey somewhere. Oh, Sarah, it was a Starland Ballroom, dude. Had to be the Sarahville one, yes. I think so. And and while you guys were sound checking, he had his Bowflex set up oh. on the floor of the uh, of the Man. venue, and he was just like pumping iron. <laughs> and I remember, I remember you guys saying something to me about it too, and and uh, it it just wasn't like it wasn't the right fit, you know. For it was but. different. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I don't know. He was a decent drummer, though. But again, like I said, a lot of it has to do is whether you can stand each other. You know, I mean, oh, it's yeah. like um, that's most and Rob Zombie man. said. It. I know Rob Zombie said it at one time. He's like, "Can I stand you?" That's that's number one. I mean, it's great you can play like John Five, but if I can't stand you, see ya, bye. I mean, it's it's a lot of it is that it's personalities and mm -hmm. and how they either clash or how they sort of able to, um, you know operate as one as one unit together on a tiny bus and in, in weird situations plus i mean we've had people come up on our bus and i'm like we should leave a gun up here dude honestly like some these sketch balls i'm sure shit's happened on your bus before too sean where people come up there and you're like okay someone's got to bounce this dude and it's probably gonna be me <laughs> i don't know oh, you yeah. know oh yeah um, I've, I've i've shoved the sh people off of my bus so fucking hard i mean it's it's uh you know, other people have had to kick people off our buses. I mean, it's, I mean, these days we don't have anybody up. We don't, you know, yeah, that whole, that whole world is, is. I think COVID kind of did a lot to sort of lessen some of the fan and interaction stuff. And, and I mean, most of these people, mean well, I think they just get really drunk and they assume that since you're on a tour bus, that that's their tour bus too. And they can just come up and say hello and, <laughs> you know it's, what I mean? Act crazy. And it's just, you know, it's, Man, it's it was tough, especially after because Wayne, like I said, had some some health things going on, and he was like, "I don't want anyone up here besides us, dude. Like this is this is our shit. Like you know, especially with this home. It's our home, and it's like it's like walking in the, through someone's front door uninvited and just like you like you own the place, man. You know, so it's true. Um, that's how that's how comedy is too. Like I, I quit smoking weed. Like I I don't know how long I'm doing it, but like I stopped smoking weed and I just fired. Almost everybody. Like I was, I was like, like, like when I was on the edibles all the time and chain smoking weed, I could handle more people. And then like when I quit, I'm just like, what? Like as soon as they see, I'm like, I can't even deal with these fucking people. Like I, I got rid of like, I got rid of most of the comedians that opened for me. I got rid of most. Like I, I just went through like a firing like marathon. Like, like I was just like, man, I can't even listen to these fucking people. And I'm not stoned. Like everyone's annoying at that point. You're not stoned. And you're like. I must have had to be high to be around these motherfuckers. You know? Yeah, that's what it seemed like. I'm just like I, I overlooked a lot of things because I was in my own head the whole time. You know, I was just I was just like in my own fantasy world. I'm, I'm you know, what I mean, I'm just like, basically. And then I stopped doing. It. I'm like, man, I can't listen to these fucking people talk or their lame ass excuses or fucking anything. I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I was basically, and I just like, I probably fired like five people like in the last week. I'm just like, I can't. Just out of like, just out of a bunch of shows I had, and I started getting local openers in the markets I'm already in, rather than like touring with people. We've had that happen in the studio too. Um, I know y'all had Eddie Wool on uh, the show. Yeah. Um, love Eddie. He he produced a when I was in Fuel. We we did a record with him called Puppet Strings, and a lot of the record, you know, we tracked. Ken Chalk came in, and he was the drummer at the time. Amazing drummer, amazing person, amazing friend, and fuck, fuck I'm a drummer, man. You know Ken, yeah, dude. So he he we went to the Steakhouse Studios where you know like Steve Lukather. I don't know if he owns it, but he's always there. Whatever, you know, and Steve Lukather's. A bad mofo walking dude as a musician, dude. That motherfucker's bad. So anyway, cut the drums in that studio. Then we go to Eddie's house. <laughs> and his son, Jack, is there, right? And um, Jack is, like, attacking you while you're playing the guitar <laughs> or the bass. Or he's, he's in your face and you're trying to concentrate on your part. And there's this little kid, like, like uh, <laughs> this is just, just in your face, like, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, you know, just, just going crazy. I don't know. I, th I thought y'all talked about that on your, on your show with Eddie. But, uh, yeah. You we know, did. I know. Okay. Okay. We did. Yeah. I, I, I tracked many uh, guitar <laughs> and bass tracks over at Eddie's house, like fighting them off with my foot as I'm like, as I'm trying to play, you know, and get the take yeah. and definitely 
Hey man, that's the vibes. That's where the vibes came from. <laughs> yeah, that's the vibe. Struggling Dodge to survive. <laughs> yeah, man, that's no, a trip, dude. Yeah, that, that's some that's some funny stuff. We I, we definitely made we made a lot of records in that house. And, and uh, man, dude's got great ears. I mean, he was great for the songs. I mean, he he was really, you know, uh, it was fun to record with him too. I didn't feel like you know some of these guys get impatient i should say and, and like he was very patient and he'd offer he'd offer up ideas and stuff you know and and help things along i mean i thought he was i thought he was he was uh, but i know he mainly does tv stuff now man so i mean you know yes. working with bands he, he may enjoy just doing it on his own i don't know <laughs> dealing with band guys and shit <laughs> yeah i mean it, it it seems like doing the tv thing i'm sure the money is you know 10 times working with bands and yeah, sure. and then he's just dealing with just himself. You know, it, it seems yeah. like the, the smart route, you know, at times, at times I think he misses, you know, doing band, you know, working with bands here and there. And I think he still does a little bit, but. Well, some of the TV people. stuff was more like soundscapes. It wasn't songs, I guess. So I'm sure if you're a song guy, you may miss some of, of like the excitement. Like for me, it was always, one of my favorite parts of the process was actually collaborating and, and writing music with ever either one person or several people or as a band or have you write or not, or something. It was almost like you're, you're creating something from out of nowhere or wherever it's coming from. And I, I really enjoyed that part of the process. And, uh, you know, and thankfully most of the band situations I've been in, I've been able to contribute as a writer and thank God I had the, you know, some success early to, to where I could hang my hat on something and say, well, you know, look, I, I had some, I did it. I did it once, you know, a couple of times, whatever, you know? So, yeah. But, you know, um, but yeah, man. So what do you What's got coming up, Sean? Um, well, I leave for tour, um, on the second. So next oh, week oh. and we're out for like, uh, five weeks and then, Get back home and go back out a couple more times over the course of the year. We're just kind of doing some touring. We we released new music last year and and uh, just touring it out this year. And y'all doing headlining stuff? Were you supporting? Yeah, we're doing? we're doing like a co-headlining portion with uh, Edema, and then we're we're headlining another portion, and we're doing a couple of shows with um, Taproot and uh, Ten Years, and and then. Uh, otherwise and oh yeah we're doing like uh taste in madison a couple little fests in there and stuff i like madison that's a good town man i i, I got my last mountain bike my road mountain bike from uh, there's a used bike store there i can't remember what it's called is but that man, good, was, was that right next to the annex oh maybe dude i don't know i i, I remember um it wasn't too far i mean the school's of course right there by the you know, it was just, it was something used bikes. I don't know. And then they also had one, they had like two shops. One was just used bikes, but it was the same name. And then they had another one that was like new, new gear and, and, uh, and that sort of thing, you know, um, new bikes and stuff. But, um, but yeah, that's good, man. I got to keep the train rolling, man. Like, you know, it's, it's, thank God we can still go out and, and make a living and, and hopefully choose decent tour situations to be in whether it's our own situation or, or supporting, you know, uh, I think with drowning pool, we're basically going to kind of flip flop, you know, they, they'll close one night. We'll close the next night. But I mean, if we're in Texas, they'll close most of those. I'm sure they're from Texas. I mean, whatever, we're totally fine being the, you know, not the last band, you know, oh, it's, it's, better. Alive, I think. It's, it's better. That's a spot, man. Everyone's there for that spot. They ain't leaving yet. Or they ain't got to go to work exactly. or, you know, exactly. whatever. I mean, it's usually, you see the most attrition in the last act, whether it's Slipknot or whoever. I mean, you know, it's people are going to start leaving. They've had enough. I mean, it's just how it is, you know? And oh yeah. It's inevitable. So uh, you guys are going back out towards the end of the year again as well. Yeah. Well, actually it starts September. We're going to do a couple shows in South Carolina. Um, I think that it's like the seventh, the sixth and seventh or something. And then I think it starts, I'd have to look. I think on the on the it's, it's September definitely. Um, let's see, September. Son of a bitch. Uh, fuck. Uh, 
about anus. So yeah, we'll start in Greenville on the 8th and then Columbia on the 9th and then the actual drowning pool. Now those are just saliva only shows. We'll start in Norfolk on the 10th of September uh, at the Norva. I know you know the Norva. Oh it's yeah, good, it's a good spot, man. It's Absolutely. funny because some of these venues you go to, you actually, if they're proper, like Machine Shop, of course, is. I know that's probably one of your favorites too. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you look at the schedule and you're like, wow, we know we're going to be treated well, good people, especially Machine <laughs> Shop. Love Kevin Zink and everybody there. It's, I've been playing. That course. I'm sure you have too. Just since we started, when they started, they started like '02, I think. We we were playing there since '03 or whatever. You know. Yep. Yep. Same story. Yeah, you're home away from home for sure. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's a welcome sight on the schedule for sure. It really is, man. So when does your when does your guys' uh, record come out? It's gonna come out on September eighth. So right when the tour is starting, it was kind of planned that way. The, the thing's been pushed back, like, I mean, so many times. I was like, it was supposed to come out last year, and then last spring or whatever. And then it was gonna be summer, and then it was gonna. Oh well, now we have to do it next year. And we're on single number three for a record. <laughs> It still hasn't come out yet, if that means anything to you. Yeah. Well, these days are so different. You know? It is different. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it, people just, just throw out singles these days, you know, in a very different way than what we're used to, you know. And it, it's it's interesting, too, because, you know, we can't, we came up when people were still buying, actually buying the record or buying the CD, you know. So, cool CD, yeah. It's, the, and, and they were so stoked, and it's like buying a record or a, a vinyl or something. But And then we saw it slowly go away. There was It became no medium, and then it was streaming. And then now vinyl had kind of made a resurgence where people actually want the physical gigantic record again, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's it's sure. been interesting, too, like how, unfortunately – the, the bands have been sort of duped by some of these companies as far as the way the royalties work. It's, it's really a shame, but I mean, I guess it's always been that way. <laughs> you know what I mean, I whether think- it's the record companies or the streaming services that are duping you around the artists that's actually supplying the talent and the music is the one that gets fucked over the most, you know? I think, I think it's Silicon Valley and like cell phones, man. I think the cell phone replaced like every industry. Yeah, that's true. You know I mean, this is like this was like a, a camera, a GPS, a recording system. Like, I mean, I, I mean, it's so many different things. And I think that like there's no there's no money going around right now because no one's buying anything. So it's like they're listening to Spotify for free or like whatever YouTube for free or something like that. They're not. I mean, movies are the same way. And like every every entertainment industry was. And I mean, it seems like at least. But I mean, I think they're gonna find new ways to come back. Like how like porn's doing like OnlyFans. I think like there's gonna be ways where like <laughs> like like rock. I mean, that's a bad example. But, but I think like music music's gonna find its way. And I think like uh, film will too and some other things like. There's no DVD sales. There's no CD sales. I mean, there's, they, they took away our out, basically. Or, or, or We're supposed to just, like, go back to the factory, I guess, at this point. You know, it's like they, 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 they took out all of our, like, hustles, I feel like, you know. I definitely think that, you know, in in, in traditional times or, or, you know, back in when people were still buying, like, if you participated in the record and whether it's writing or just on, on the actual contract, you would sort of live in the off season when you're writing and recording off the royalties that you just were still, were still coming in from the previous record, you know, but when those royalties are zero or, or less, they're, you know, a 10th of what they probably used to be from, from, you know, those situations, you kind of go, wow, man, like, what am I going to do on the, what am I going to do in the off season? <laughs> like, I'm like a driver Uber. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> you know? You're right. Yeah. No, I mean, that's why it's good. Sean's only fans is far. <laughs> Sorry, I did. That, uh, no, I mean, I but no, and that's what it seems like. You have to have like multiple hustles. Like, uh, it's just like I mean, you. It, I think the time take, I mean, even even down to like legalization of weed, like that was, that was a side hustle a lot of people had as an out, you know. And and, and like I, I think like all the all the side hustles are going away. It seems like to where you almost have to get some bullshit job. It seems you know what I mean that's what it's seeming like. I don't know. I mean, there's ways out. I mean, you guys probably kill it in merch sales and ticket sales and blah. I mean, there's, but you're, but you're missing eighty percent of the profit with the, with the, with the album. You know, I mean, albums were probably a lot of the sales. You know, I actually got my real estate license uh, about six years ago, which we had properties. Uh, you know, we, we that we kind of managed our, ourselves. We had them for about fifteen years or so, but we. Um, I didn't have my license then. So, you know, like I said, about six years ago, I actually got my license and would really just do it for our, our own properties. And I actually ended up with three rental properties, whatever, but we got rid of them because man, 
that seems like a good idea <laughs> to have someone else pay the mortgage and rent your place. But man, and if you get good tenants and get lucky, yes, it's great. But um, I right couldn't wait, is. could not wait to sell those things, dude. Like, holy shit, man. So anyway, got rid of those. But then I started just doing deals for friends and acquaintances. And I don't know if y'all know um, Brian Marshall from used to be Creed, now Alt Alter Bridge. Um, mm -hmm. He was a realtor. He's actually referred me uh, business that uh, from from friends moving in the area and stuff and, and, and people. But he, he's super cool, dude. But he operates like in the Fort Walton Beach area and stuff. But for me, like I kind of didn't. I, I like to do it. It's, it's, it's kind of a good side hustle for me too. But I mean, of course it's not like I'm, my passion, of course, it will always be with music and, and, and that, and that, but, but it's, it's managed to help me through some, some years and some tough times, you know, when, when we weren't touring. So thank God I was able to sort of have that on the side, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta have, you gotta have other hustles, you know, it's, it's, uh, the rock, world, the, rock, the rock world is not as fruitful as it once was. Yep, Creed is back. They're they're gonna do a, a thing. Uh, uh, I know they're doing that that that. There's a cruise that they're doing with Three Doors Down. It's called the Summer of '99 cruise or something, and it's got like Fuel and Vertical Horizon and, and Creed and Three Doors and and uh, it should be interesting. Man, a lot of bands that you thought you would never see them touring again. Are touring again <laughs> because because sure. of that reason we just talked about you know royalties start drying up and they're like i know i said i hated you man but let's just go out and do it again <laughs> that's definitely i know i punched you in the face but come on man let's just do it you know yeah that's been happening lately man well gentlemen i hate to bail but uh it's getting it's getting late i gotta go yeah we probably should take this to the outro but i know <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but but dude, hey, uh, Brad, thanks for coming on. Here. Pleasure to meet you, man. Like, uh, like, thanks and, and uh, thanks for having me, man. Lo loved it, every bit of it, man. Thank you so no, much. Oh, likewise, for me. yeah. And thank yeah. you everyone for watching. Uh, Cody for producing. Uh, Sean for being here. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I, I guess we'll take it to the outro. I think I think we got Joe Biden saying dumb stuff again. So, <laughs> so yeah. he just he just Which keeps printing material for you. He's pretty stronger content. than expert expected at two point nine percent. We're going <laughs> jobs. Jobs are the highest in America number and the highest in American history. And wages are up. And they're growing faster than inflation. Over the past six months, inflation has gone down every month, and God willing, we'll continue to do that. Manufacturing jobs continue to go up stronger than any time in the last 40 years. He's a reptile, dude. <laughs> <laughs>